going on? Going on, everybody. Testing, testing. Frame drops looking good. All right. So, never really done this before. So we're gonna drive right in, but we're gonna do a tutorial for beginners, really, on how to play Legend of Mana, Dragon Percent. Kind of like the down and dirty, like, if you're just getting started and you kinda of wanna know what it's all about, and maybe a few little tricks. So to start with, press New Game. And, you know, you have two characters to select from. Pretty identical. Um, I've heard that the male is slightly faster, but has more copy or uh, dialogue. But I've heard that they kind of even themselves out. As, so if you're like, ooh, which one's faster, which one's better, I think really you could do very well with either character. Just gonna pick the, the dude for today, and uh, pretty sure the only weapon for this category is the sword. Hey, Faros, welcome, dude. Thank you, man. We're just getting started. We're kind of diving right in. I was just thinking about the weapon and how you could potentially route in any weapon, but I don't know anybody else. Like, for instance, the other categories, Jumi and... I think Jumi used to do a sword, and now it does a hammer. Fairy... Really, with Fairy, you could pick any weapon because... You purchase a gold weapon later. That's your strong weapon. Since we're playing Dragon, they're like the only... Because it's routed with the Brave Blade, we're just going to do the two-handed sword. Just learning Dragon Percent, just go ahead and get that two-handed sword. And if you're going to be as try-hard as possible, you could do like the one name, uh, the one character name, like a lot of people do with their games. The name isn't really mentioned a lot in dialogue. So, I've heard that it doesn't really matter, but again, if you want to try as hard as possible, I always do the one letter because I figure what, you know, it's not going to hurt me. Um, technically, it sounds like you could save frames using the one. And you just hit the start button. So, I, I just hit circle to delete U until I left Y. Circle is delete, X is select. 
Now when you're done naming your character, all you do is hit the start button. And this is the world map. And uh, it's already been routed to be in a specific spot. You'll notice as you go around the map, it'll turn dark. That means that if you and if you try to hit X, you hear that little doot doot doot. That means you can't 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 start in that area of the map. But then you can see if you move over a little, it turns light. We could potentially start there. So, but like I said, it's been routed to start here. Um, I don't know exactly why, but I know that water. There needs to be some water for particular artifacts. We'll talk about what artifacts are to be dropped next to. But you don't want so much water either because uh, it can affect, I think, the enemy strength. We don't need to worry about that, but that's just a little side note. So if you were trying to find it, like, in a pragmatic way and, you, in, and you're just starting off, you're going to say one, two, three... No, it'd be one, two. So it'd be one, two from the right-hand side. And one, two, three. So two to the left and three down. So if you if you can't remember, start all the way to the top right. Say one, two to the left. One, two, three down. And so you'll notice when we hit X, we are able to continue. It didn't turn dark and make that weird noise. So the very next time we press X is when we start the timer. And I'm going to do the timer, even though we're doing a tutorial. We're just going to let it run. And um, the purpose of that is going to be so that I can show you where to split and how to split. Again, this is very basic stuff. So like if you've never done a speed run ever, then you should know this stuff. Um, so yeah. Let's go ahead and start. So I'm gonna hit X and start my timer at the exact same time. So I'll count myself down. Three, two, one, go. Now, I'm just mashing X because for this particular category, um, all that's happening right now is auto, but as soon as, I'm not certain. I don't, I don't think you have to press X for any of that. Or maybe you just have to for the placement. Yeah, because you do have opportunity to put it where you want. So I'm mashing X right here as fast as I can around the 32 second mark because there's a cutscene that you need to get past. And then I'm I'm mashing X now too. You want to mash X through this intro cutscene with, with this copy here. You don't have to mash until it gets to like say remnants of mana and then you mash to get to this then after hundreds of years so technically you could just save your thumb strength until the very end but i just mash through just to make sure i don't don't miss anything at all I'm just mashing through this text when it says remember me need me that's when you know it's almost over find me and walk beside me is the last okay once it disappears you can stop mashing hey thanks man Oh, that's rad. Thanks, Varos. Yeah, and I will definitely highlight it so you can go back and miss anything. Rewatch it. Thanks, dude. Yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna have a lot of fun. No pressure. Low pressure on this. So, here we are. The game starts off in your home. You notice the character got out of bed. He does that on his own. And as soon as the character turns to face you like he is now, that's when we hit start. And we're going to go down to skill, hit X, and we're going to, it's up to you where you want to assign these. For me, I like to put spin on the triangle and lunge on the circle. And then I like to put my AOE, or my, um, my not AOE special technique. So special techniques are, so when you go to, um, under special techniques magic, your shoulder button, R1 for me, again, you could do whatever you want, but I like to put my AOE on the L1 and my non-AOE on the R1. 
Uh, so I select R1, then I select ST, and you start off with a Rising Crush. That's given to you by default because our two-handed sword. If we were to pick a hammer, you would start off with Blammo, so on and so forth. So that's the first thing you do. You hit Start. You go down to Skill. You assign Spin and Lunge to triangle and circle which are your ability buttons again you could put lunge on triangle and spin on circle if it's better for you that way and then you want to assign the only st you have at this point to any of those four shoulder buttons for me I like r1 and then the quickest way out of this you could go circle 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 but that's not the fastest way the fastest way is to just hit the start button so again start skill Pick spin, pick lunge, pick rising crush, and then hit start, and you're out. And then you're always running in this game. Don't know if you ever walk. We'll, we'll find out. But uh, to run, you hold circle. And then I just move the dialog, uh, move the uh, analog stick to go downstairs. Go out this door, and we're gonna run down to this little sproutling guy and talk to him. I am a Sproutling. The world can be shaped by your imagination. Did you know that? You picked the first option. I knew that. And then he goes, here you go. And he's going to give you the very first artifact. So AF stands for artifact. And the the artifact that we're given is called color block. Um, technically, the first artifact is home that you saw placed. Automatically get home. Automatically uh, placed. I guess you, you place it in the default position. Uh, and then that's where we are now at home and now we got our first artifact from Sproutling and he says this is the town of Domino so color blocks but then you leave uh, exit the world map yes so color blocks becomes Domino this game has something what's called the land make system where you find artifacts along the way so it says Select the artifact by pressing square. Find artifacts along the way, which here's color box. This is kind of like a grid system, like so you could see that you can go up, down, left, and right. Can't drop past these points yet. You see the the you can drop on the area that's lit up. Um, but this has been routed in a specific way, so we're going to drop color blocks to the left, to the west of home. And when we drop it, it will turn into Domino. So that's the land make system. You choose, kind of choose where you want to drop the artifacts. And, um, Domino appears. That's our first stop. So once you drop Domino, mash X to walk over to it, then mash X again to end. Uh, I like to be running before the screen fades in, so you'll see me running. Oops, I didn't hold down circle. So you can see, let's go back out for a minute. You can see, well, we can't now, we have a cutscene. So this is Duel here, with the onion mask, talking to El Azul, the character we're going to speak to momentarily. Duel's going to let us know that he doesn't really care for El Azul. Jeez, he makes me. Sick. Okay, so let me let me just point out the difference between walking and running and what it makes. So here's me walking. That's the speed. Here's me running. You can see it's just like at least twice as fast. We're gonna. Oh, that was interesting. Hmm. Here's what we're gonna do. Let's leave. See if we can get uh, Niccolo to come back out because. Because I left and came back, I didn't realize that Niccolo wouldn't come through the door. That's weird. Then we're going to see if we can make him appear. Because normally, as you're walking up to the hub door, as you're coming out, this uh, character named Niccolo is coming in. See if he appears. No, nope, I, I, too bad, but I made him disappear. So as soon as you enter the pub, you run over to El Azul, and you mash X. Silence, don't interrupt. 
So he's talking to this, uh, looks like a fairy. Kind of sternly. We find out later that he's searching for his friend. So he's a little frustrated that he can't find her. Um, we're going to say option two for everything. So ask what happened. Mashing X. Uh, ask about the friend. And then a third time, second option. Let's search for her. And you can just mash, mash, mash. And we got a new artifact, a jade egg. And we have El Azul in tow now, so he's hanging out with us. As we leave the pub, you'll see he comes with us. And we just leave Dominant. So now we have the Jade Egg. That's <laughs> funny, I'm already... Okay, so now we have the Jade Egg, and we're going to drop the Jade Egg to the east of home. Or to the right of home. Um, what I like to do... So you could... For speed's sake, what I like to do is to move the hand to the spot I want to drop the artifact first. The reason I do that is because I have control of it first. Um, again, if you're speedrunning it and, and, and you're trying to go as fast as possible and try hard as possible, you're not going to be able to move the hand. I mean, I'm sorry, you're not going to be able to mash square and pick up the jade egg right away. There's a bit of a delay, so... For the sake of staying going as fast as possible, you do gain access to the movement of the hand first. So I move that first. Oop. Oop. We're going to put it to the right of home. We're going to press square to pick up our artifact over here. This little uh, black and white checkerboard circle, uh, uh, like a Lazy Susan thing, is where all your artifacts will live as you pick them up. Or you place them on then we press X, and then X again. And Jade Egg is going to become the Mecca of Caverns. And then we just mash X to move our character over to Mecca of Caverns, and then we mash it again, enter. And there's some intro copy here. So this, you see the Lost Princess, you gotta mash through that to get it to go away. Ella's looks like a sense brilliance nearby, let's hurry. Now you see him turn around there, that's because you now have control. There's a bit of a delay there before you gain control. We're gonna run underneath Duel to this lower right exit. We're gonna continue down. It also goes over here. We don't want to go over there. We avoid that. We go down these little steps. This is a little cave here. We're going to avoid that and keep going down. And our first battle. We're going to, before we pop into it, I'll just talk about these little mushroom guys are called mushbooms. And then there's also going to be a bat. Um, I typically go for the bat first. Um, even though they generally move around about the same, it's still RNG. Also, you know, so like, you're, you're not exactly sure what they're going to do, so you just have to kind of like work with it. Also, you don't know what El Azul's going to do. He could, you could just be about to attack, and then El Azul, since he's AI, he'll knock the enemy away from you and you'll whiff. So those are things that are out of your control. But I'm going to attack the bat first with a slash and a spin. Um, let's talk about the attack. So, let's see if I can avoid death while I explain the, the power cancel. The power cancel, uh, so in this game, you have two attack buttons, regular attack buttons for your weapon. Uh, in this case, the two-handed sword. The first one is the X, which is a, is a basic slash, so I'll do that now. And there's little cooldown, little to no cooldown there. I can... Mash X and just, you can see me swinging pretty quick over and over in, in quick succession. Then there is Square, which is a power cancel. But look at that huge slowdown. One, it's like one, two, it's like two seconds of slowdown. So, I'm 
what I want to show you guys, hopefully I can leave and come back and re... Or actually the next battle, we can show it in the next battle. What I want to show you guys is the power cancel. Actually... Oh yeah, I can't, I can't do it. The power cancel is a trick that someone figured out where you can mash the square button to do your heavy attack. But then you'll notice in the beginning of the game we we assigned this button here, R1, with an ST. But all the other buttons right now are empty. So technically you could use any of the three empty shoulder buttons to buffer your power our attack, which is square, okay? So when you hit square, normally, you're gonna do a heavy attack, and you're gonna have that two seconds or so of cooldown that's really annoying. Someone came along and figured out, hey, you can press one of the empty shoulder buttons. In this case, I use L2. Immediately after, you mash square to buffer and cancel that long cooldown. And so you can just repeatedly and very quickly, without any slowdown, repeat that heavy attack. So we're going to be doing a lot of that. And when you buffer it, when you mash that empty shoulder button, you'll hear like a beeping noise or a honking noise. That is letting you know that you're mashing the empty shoulder button. So let's see if we can do it. I'm using spin too, which is triangle square in quick succession. It works well on flying objects. Okay, we're picking up this experience. You want to pick it up as fast as possible to get moving. You also saw that we leveled up there. Um, depending on when you level up, it also has a bit of a cooldown. You'll see the words level up appear, and then it'll take a couple seconds. So let's say that you picked up all your experience. Normally you would immediately finish the battle. The, the uh, spoils message would come up and let you know how much experience and money you got. And you could clear through that and be on your way. But if you level up at that time, there's a few extra seconds of cooldown before that happens. So... You'll, you'll note, you might notice that as well. So that's our second battle. We go right. It's the only way to go. Here, I think you probably could go to the right, but we're going to stay... We're going to go to the left. We're going to go down these stairs. Uh, one more set of battles. As soon as we run across... So again, we're holding circle to run. Here's walk. Here's run. Walk. Run. Uh... We're going to come up to a crab and two mushrooms. Um, everybody I've talked to seems to like, think that it's best to attack the crab first, so I typically do that. You hear that? Boop. That was me canceling the, uh, those are me canceling that cooldown. And that's a basic slash. Sometimes I use a basic slash if there's only just a little bit left of HP because it's faster to just do to just mash X and do that basic slash. It will it will kill the enemy and you'll take much less time than if you did another power cancel. Not a, well, I wouldn't say much time, but it would save you a little bit of time. So those are th little things, little optimizations you can do. Here, um, this person, I can't remember her name. You don't know where she's going to be. Sometimes she walks up here, sometimes she walks down here. So as you come through the door, you just want to avoid her and go into this little cave. And this is our first boss. His name is Dewey. Stalagmite Cavern. So we're going to, I'm going to press start so you can see. You wouldn't do this in a normal run, but we have the advantage of this being a tutorial. When you, if you press start ever in a during battle, if you're not in battle, you'll go to your menu. But if you are in battle, it will tell you the name of the enemy or enemies and their level. 
So that's convenient if you're learning. This guy's level one. I think we're level two. And his name is Doink. He actually has like two similar like brother bad guys in the game that we we might see in another category. I don't think we see any more of these guys in uh but my strategy here is, uh, and, and a good strategy to kind of, like a rule of thumb in this game, is to try to get your enemy either over to the exit where you're headed or just in, in the direction of where you want him to be. So in this case, because we're going to have a cutscene to the far left of the screen, and we won't be going right ever again. We won't be leaving this cave. We'll uh, be, um, this event, the Lost Princess, ends in this room. So we're going to try to get doing over to the left side, where he'll eventually stop. Uh, there'll be a wall. To do that, I'm going to do a, pl I think it's called a plunge attack, which is me pressing square again but while i'm moving so i'm gonna i'm gonna press the um the analog stick or the directional pad towards doing while i'm mashing square and it should do a plunge and push him up and over so hopefully we can make that happen it's like an uppercut you know we got him over there and then we just attack now you see him going into some sort of, he's about to do some sort of special attack. He stopped attacking us, we know he's about to do it. So, I like to stand outside of his shadow, but not too far. See, I'm outside of the shadow. I like to kind of hang out around his left foot. And you remember that we loaded Rising Crush, I think it's called, into R1. So, that has like a, a, a build up to that attack which you'll see. And you can time it pretty well to hit Doink if you mash it about at the apex of his animation. He's going to lift that axe of his up in the air. Once it's way up there in the air, that's when you can go ahead and mash R1 or wherever you applied your special technique. And we should hit him. Uh, let's see if it works. Oh, I whiffed. That's okay. We'll do it again. It's hard with the pausing and whatever, but we'll get another opportunity. So again, I'm power canceling. Now, you'll see that uh, sometimes your character, your AI character, El Azul there, can do an ST. If you're lucky, it's, it's hard to make it happen, but if you're lucky, you can keep doing stunned or dizzied or something and your character, your AI character, will land their ST, which is very nice. It can really make things go a little faster. But let's try to do this again. Oh, I don't have my ST. That's right. I got dizzy. I don't have my ST built up. But I do now, so we'll finally get one off right here. So here we go. Oh, this one's going to be different because his third ST is much longer. You can see it does like this stalagmite drop. There, we finally hit him. So that's what you want to do is... Um, you, you, if you're good and you, and, you, and you do it right, you shouldn't see that third ST. The one where stalagmites fall, or tights fall to the ground, okay? So all the other ones are him, where the first one and the second one are him lifting that axe up. When his axe is up in the air and, it's, and he's about to bring it back down, that's when you go ahead and mash your ST button. And you see we hit him. Um, now we can go ahead and finish him off. going to do one more so that's this is this is about what it's like at the beginning the lift that axe up you'll do your st you want to pick this up as quickly as possible and you want to stand your character right in front of this little rock 
because you see that we learned our uh, we learned two STs there, lunging arc and wind slasher. Those are important. Anyways, you can see that if you can get your character in that spot where I am now, like right in front of that rock, but not too close, then the character doesn't move very much. It's kind of like a frame skip in that if if you weren't where you're supposed to be, if you let's say you were where El Azul is, and everything ends and you weren't able to make it there, then the game is going to slowly walk you to that spot anyway. You're wasting time. So that's the incentive to get right in front of that rock as quick as possible. We're going to mash X until he says, I'm sorry, I'm so sorry. Well, at that point, you're going to select the second option, side with El Azul. It's a very small optimization. It's a little bit less text or something. So anyways, El Azul found Pearl. This is Pearl, his friend. And you completed the Lost Princess. We're going to get a splash screen here in a minute. Also, Pearl's going to give us an artifact or two, I think. Let's see what she gives us. Don't I? Firefly Lamp. Two very important artifacts. And I like to split as the screen fades. You have to mash X to make it fade. Um, so, we're going to do Monster Corral. But before we do Monster Corral, we have to do a... Uh, um, an axe grind because even though we start out with this two hand sword it's not going to get us very far um, if we go right back into the caverns you'll notice that we just left the caverns here we are we could move if we wanted to we're going to stay right here and enter the caverns again and um, we're going to grind for an axe that's way stronger at this point in the game it's going to really help us plow through the enemies there's two different axes you can pick up, and we'll see what we get. So we run down here, just like before, but instead of continuing, we're get, these things are called boinks. I'm going to talk to this lower boink, and he's going to warp us to a cave. You just hold up, go into the cave, and you're going to fight these goblins until you get an axe drop. Again, power cancel. I'm hitting square, and then I'm buffering right afterwards with... Pretty much mashing square and then immediately mashing R2. And I can just... Okay, so we didn't get the X that time. Something to think about here is that, you know... If you're racing, or if you're just starting, you could just keep grinding for that X. But as you get better and better, you might reset here since you're usually only about 8 minutes or 9 minutes in at this point. If you don't get a first try X, you probably reset because that's the most optimal. But for us, we're just going to keep trying. So we didn't get it, but we did get uh, 70 lucre and 27 experience. Yay! So all you do is leave and come back to regenerate those goblins. Oops. Yeah, there's two axes. One of them's called a Black Elk. One of them's called the Earth Splinter. And uh, depending on what we get, talk about it. You'll hear people talk about second try, third try axe. Okay, we got a second try axe, so that's pretty cool. Oh, we got a black elk, yes! My favorite axe. So there's two axes here that drop. Um, I think it's like 25% chance to get an axe drop. So you might get it on the first try, you might get it on the fourth try, or the fifth try, right? Um, the Black Elk is really cool. It's a one-handed axe, whereas the other axe, called the Air Splitter, is a two-handed axe. So as you might expect, the Black Elk is a little bit lighter. You can swing it a little bit faster. Uh, the Air Splitter is heavier, and you can feel that. Um, it's a little stronger, but you can't swing it quite as fast. I'm really happy that, that we got this Black Elk. It's my favorite. Immediately hit Start. Go to Equip. The fastest way to do this... Now, what I'm doing is I'm just hitting X, right? So X, X on my weapon, which right now is the Manos two-handed sword. Um, instead of hitting Equip, because I know I only have uh, one super strong weapon in my list right now, if I were to go to Equip, you can see that that's all I have right now is the Black Elk. So it, 
it behooves me to go to auto select. It's just like one, it's like a, a few frames faster, but it's a nice little optimism. So again, you go to equip, weapons, auto select, which we already have. XXX, we got it. Now, again, normally we could hit start to leave, but we don't want to leave yet. We want to go to skill. And we want to change spin, jump. Spin got us the special technique we wanted to learn, which I'm going to show you in a minute. So we don't need spin anymore. And lunge got us the special technique we wanted. So we don't need that anymore. We'll keep jump. Jump will stay for the rest of the game. Lunge is going to change to... The fastest way is to just push the up button. And No, I'm sorry. Um, jump. Uh, is it defend? Up and defend? Yeah, defend. My bad. So jump in the triangle for me. You could put it in circle if you like. And then defend in the circle. Uh, later, defend will become counterattack. And then later, counterattack will become counterstrike. So ultimately, we, we were looking for counterstrike. So that's why we place defend at this point. Then you can also go ahead and drop in these... No, there's no STs at this point. But you can see that we learned these. We started with Rising Crush, we learned Lunging Arc by applying the Lunge ability, and we learned Wind Slasher, which is an AoE, with the Spin ability. But at this point, we don't have any Axe abilities because we haven't fought any battles with the Axe yet. So, Start Menu, Whip, Auto Select, then you go to Skill, Jump, Defend, and then you hit Start to Leave, and you leave this cave. So we're gonna go right, down and to the left. Left. You're going to have a battle here. Now, I'll point out, um, I'll do a jump cancel for you guys. So there's power cancel and jump cancel. That's it, right? Power cancel and jump cancel. Power cancel is, like I showed you, it's a powerful attack that you buffer and you, therefore you can repeat it over and over without any slowdown, without any uh, cooldown animation. Uh, jump cancel is the same, but you do it by buffering with the jump button. So if you recall, oops, if you recall, I put jump in the triangle. So I'm going to be mashing square like normal for my power attack, but instead of canceling it with an empty shoulder button, I'm going to cancel it with triangle just jump and what it's going to do is it's going to add a second attack so i'm going to come down with a power and then follow it up with like a plunge type uppercut attack it's pretty sweet and it helps you once you learn it it's a little harder to learn the power cancel but once you figure it out it's a good way to get your enemy to move you want to move your enemy towards a certain part of the screen so let's give it a shot so here's a jump Ooh, and we got that double. So you see, we, we hit one of the bats with the power and one of them with the, with the jump. So that was cool. Keep going left, and we just attack these guys. I'm going to be doing... I'll try to do mostly power cancels, because you can beat the whole game with power cancels. You don't have to do jump. That kind of comes later when you're more, when you're more comfortable and you've learned it. Trying to pick up the experience and money as quickly as possible and get moving. And we're just... Now you recognize this area. We're just leaving. And you try to squeeze underneath the boinks. Leave the cave. You hit exit to the world map. Yes. So that is your axe grind. That went pretty well. It only took us two tries. Um, at this point, we're going to head back. We're not dropping any... Um, Artifacts yet. We're just going to head back to Domino. We're going to meet up with Niccolo. We're going to get an artifact while hanging out with him, and then we're going to learn how to catch a monster egg. So instead of going into the pub, this time we're going to go right. It takes us to the little map. We're going to keep going up. Uh, let me just point out the fact that you just want to be careful. You can accidentally walk into this little area, which is the church. You just want to make sure you're staying on this line here. I'm going to run down and talk to Nicola. 
and you're gonna select option two, which is no, which basically says, hey, I'm not scared of bad guys. And then you're gonna say yes twice, which is option one. No, uh, just one time, my bad. Just one time, so option two, option one. So now we have Niccolo in tow with us. And he needs to go see Tipo. So first thing we do is go see Tipo. Go left. We go down. We avoid the Sproutling. This Sproutling is either standing still right here, which is great. If he's standing still, you just go past him on either side. It's faster to go this way if you can. Or he's moving left, which is also ideal. In which case, you can just go around him again. Sometimes he, though, is standing here and then he walks right this way. <laughs> and it can be kind of messed up. You, you can try to squeeze through him. If you can't, you got to go around this way. It's awkward. So you're hoping that he's either standing still or moving to the left. And then you just go whoop through here down past the mailbox. You skip the first door and you go into the second door. This is Tipo. He's like a teacup guy. So we talk to him, and uh, basically Niccolo is a salesman. He's going to try to sell this wheel artifact to him for 50,000 lucre, and <clears throat> Tipo's like, no, I don't think so. Too much money. Uh, so Niccolo's like, that's cool. I'm going to let me borrow it for a little bit. Until then, he says, I'll let Y use it. So you hear the dling of getting an artifact. That is your cue to know that this little scene's almost over. So we get the artifact wheel. And then Niccolo, you're a bleeding... You're the bleeding worst. I'll cop the money, so please let me have it. And then Niccolo says, I'll be back. And Tipo says, bloody artless. That's, that's your cue to leave. You're done. What's up, Wampa? Yeah, how does Tipo sound? Hmm. That's a good question. It's fun to wonder how these characters would sound. Um, welcome, Wampa. So, anyways, once you've got spoken to Tipo and you got your wheel, then you head this way, to the left. And you're in the map. So you're in and out of these little map areas. You're going to go to the left. And you're going to go to the left here as well. And we're just going left, left, left. Left again. Left again, past this pelican bird. And follow this. You can't actually do anything over here, so... I mean, maybe you can go in that door. It doesn't really go anywhere, so you just follow this path. And we're going to arrive at the at the uh, western end, is what it's called. So here's Duel. We saw him a couple of times. We saw him at the beginning. Uh at the entrance to Domino when we first started the game. And then we saw him again in Mecca Cavern. We walked past him, so he, he gets around. Uh, so he's like, look, a bot drag. So basically right now we're going to do a little side quest that will unlock the potential to get pets in this game. And we have a very special pet we're going to pick up later, but this enables us to get it. First you got to do this. This is kind of a, a challenging little side little thing to do. Uh, it, it takes some practice. Uh, there's some good tutorials out there on this. I, I'm probably not going to be able to do it justice, but I'll, I'll try to explain the best I can what to do. So, first things first. We're going to talk to El Azul. He's like, that's a beast egg. You never see wild eggs around here. All right, lucky you are. This is a rare opportunity to try to catch it. As soon as I mash X, there's going to be a list of things I can pick from. Um, so if you were playing casually, you could learn about each of these things. We don't care. The fastest way to get to option three, which is what we want, is to press up. I'll try to catch it. He's like, not so fast. You can't just haphazardly walk up to an egg. There are watching you. Go carefully and try to catch them off guard. So then there's going to be some more options. We don't care. We're going to press up to get to I can do it. Go ahead. Let's come on. I, I just want to go ahead and get the egg. I know how to do it. Leave me alone. So he's like, okay, try using this. So then 
Duel gives us these berries, these fruits. You get dice berry, bell grapes, and citrus squid. And then he's going to show us how to grab those. So we're going to press triangle to select our fruit and then X to drop it. What that's going to do is we're going to try desperately to get the beast egg to eat the fruit. Because while he's eating it, he's distracted and we can catch him. And the strategy I use that tends to work the most, 9 out of 10 times, 8 out of 10 times I can make it happen, is to, we're going to run up to the egg, kind of to the right side of the egg. And, and kind of run towards him to get him to run away from us because he doesn't like us. And you'll see if you, you'll see if you, when you're practicing this or if you're playing casually, he doesn't want anything to do with us. If we get near him, he's going to go away from us. So we're going to try to trick him. We're going to drop. We're going to get him to move to the left of the screen to run away from us. Right as he does that, we're going to drop a piece of fruit using triangle and X and immediately go around the top and over to the left side of the egg to get him to move the opposite way towards the fruit. Hope that makes sense. I'll do it and we'll see if we can, uh, if it kind of makes more sense. Uh, so, Monster Crow is going to pop up. That's our event. Oh, it automatically goes away. Oh, that didn't work. I fucked it up. I wish I could start over. Anyways. There we go. That's what I meant to do the first time. Did he eat it? Yay! So when it starts blowing up with red, that's when you can go catch him. So I, I didn't get it the first time. Because I'm talking and thinking and pausing. Blah, blah, blah. But you can see that I, I, just, I, I used my original strategy, which was to get on one side to make him move to the opposite way and he went and he picked up the fruit you don't want to um crowd him if you crowd him he won't get the fruit he'll be scared and run away so it's it's really nuanced and it, it takes some practice but now we have ourselves a beast egg and he takes it to the monster crowd we're gonna go talk to duel so we finish this event relax pelican will deliver the egg to the crowd well we better head to the crowd too it's gonna warp us there here's the crowd and we just mashed through all this. This is Duel telling us about the Monster Corral, how you can have up to like three monsters at a time, grazing, leveling up for you. Uh, this, that, and the other about eggs. We don't care. We're just trying to get through this event. We've accomplished what we wanted to, which was to unlock uh, pet abilities. Um, although, you know, a little, little side note, not super important, but you do automatically get a rabbit pet for doing this. Never used, but yeah, he looks just like this. There's Monster Crow. Done. So now we're on to Harry's Light. So you'll remember, if you remember when we saved Pearl for the Lost Princess, she gave us two artifacts. One of them was the Stone Eye. The other one was the Lamp. Let's, let's see what it's called. Either way, we're going to go north of the caverns. Press square to get to your artifacts. I'm going to press right to get to the lamp there, Firefly lamp. And we're going to drop it. We've already selected where we're going to drop it. And I explained why. You, you, you have the ability to move the hand before you have the ability to pick up the artifacts. So I, I move to the position first, and I grab the artifact second. Press X to drop the Firefly Lamp. I can see myself making so many mistakes because I'm going so slow. Let's see how it goes, man. Um, and it becomes Lumina, which is a very charming event. I can't wait to show you guys. Just mash X, you'll walk to Lumina. Mash X again, and you'll enter Lumina. So we're just dropping one artifact. Um, the very first thing we're going to do is hold up. And again, I'm always running, so I'm holding the circle button automatically. That is that map area. Hold up. Now we're inside. I'm going to walk past this, uh, run past this dead bear. That's a dead bear. And we're going to run up these stairs. 
before we go in this door here, which is um, a lamp shop, I want to show you guys how I approach this. Um, I normally hold my controller in a normal way like this, okay? Show it off. Just the normal way you would hold a PS2 or a PS controller. I switch to this mode, though. I switch my right hand. So instead of with my thumbs, I switch like this. Because what I want to do is run with with one of my fingers with my middle finger. And then mash X to talk to uh, Monique it's while I'm sim simultaneously holding down circle. And that's going to give me a frame skip, and I'll explain. So hold down. I'm holding down circle, and I'm running, and I'm going to mash X. Bam. Holding down circle and mashing. Now, this character, um, Gilbert, walks in, and I'm going to get out of the way to allow him to come up and talk to Monique. Well, if you're not holding circle, you'll walk slowly to the left. If you are holding circle when you mash X and talk to Monique, you'll run. So it's a frame skip. The little thing, <clears throat> you'll learn how to do it. Basically, we're going to sell lamps here. Um, uh, Gilbert is a bard. He loves women. He is interested in Monique. Monique mentions that she's having trouble eating and making money and selling her lamps, so we're going to help her. We immediately talk to Gilbert. He's going to say, Oh, you, traveler there, take these. You can't have Monique in distress like that, can you? Let's go sell those six lamps for her. I'll buy my share of lamps, but you should go sell them. So when you see the thousand, I always just look for the thousand here. When you see each one costs 1,000 lucre, of course you can buy them yourself. That's when you're going to select option two. Go sell them. What a good sport. Willing to help out with my love. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so here we go. And we go back the way we came. And we're going to go this way on the map. When I get to this position, I just hold up in a circle. And it goes right up the stairs perfectly. That's just my method. Um, and uh, we want to talk to these dead bears. Right now, if we talk to them, they just say, Dub. That's all. We don't. They don't say anything else. Because we don't know the language. But this uh, cafe owner or whatever does, so by speaking to him... He's like, yeah, the dud bears are regulars. I talk to him all the time. You want to learn how to speak some dud bear? I'm like, yeah. So option one for yes. Mash through this. He's going to teach you a little dud bear, a little conversational dud bear. And when you're done, he's, you just mash the first one, dub. And he's going to be like, haha, that sounds pretty good. You already learned the word dub. So now we're going to sell our lamps. First, this guy. Now, I don't expect you to learn dud bear and I don't know Dead Bear, so the easiest way I can teach you guys is we're going to sell three... <clears throat> we're going to sell our lamps to three Dead Bears. This is the first one. And the easiest way I know how to tell you is you're going to pick three options on each Dead Bear, and they're all different. The first one is option two, option one, option one. I'm sorry, there's four, so it's option two, option one, option one, option three. It's always three at the end which is three is like, hey, you want to buy a lamp? But you don't just like go into it, right? Like, hey, you want to buy a lamp? Hey, you want to buy a lamp? You kind of talk to the dud bear first. So that's those options. So he's going to talk to us. We're going to say option two. Option one. Option one. Option three. Yay, we sold the first lamp. So we're going to dub. So then after he says dub, we leave. Now we're going to do that again with this guy. But this time it's one, 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 three. One, 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 three. And I'm just hitting up to go to option three. It's the fastest way. You could go down. You could say tap, tap to get to three. But you could just do it in one tap by hitting up. So there we sold another lamp. So we're going to go back the way we came. Remember, when we entered, there's a dud bear. That's our last dud bear that we need to speak to. This time, it's two, two, one, three. Is 
dub. Okay, so we're good. We sold all the lamps. We're going to go back and talk to Gilbert. He's like, oh, you sold them all. Yay. We're going to follow him. And he's going to talk to uh, Monique and let her know that like, we sold them all. And when they're done talking, they'll leave and we'll follow them. And then we go to the left. You're going to want to run behind. You can't really see what you're doing. You can see I'm running and you can see that flashing. That's me running right to the behind of um, Gilbert. So if you mash X, they'll start singing and talking to each other. Mash through this cutscene. Um, that's pretty much Fairy's Light. When we're done, we'll go back in and talk to Monique again and receive at least one artifact, maybe two. I think we've received two artifacts, actually. Basically, long story short, it doesn't work out between Gilbert and Monique. And Gilbert takes off. So as soon as she enters, we'll gain control of the character and we can run behind her. And I'm going to do the same thing. You can do the same, excuse me, the same frame skip here. So I'm going to hold circle while I'm mashing X so that I run to the side when these dud bears walk in. And as soon as the dud bears leave is when uh, Monique will be like, thanks so much, here's some artifacts for your, for all your help. You'll notice we still have Niccolo with us. Okay, so artifact Trembling Spoon and artifact Sandrise. Got two artifacts. Yeah, we split as it fades to black. So the reason we still have Niccolo with us is because he still wants our help. Um, and that's where we're going next. So we're going to go to the left. We're going to drop the Trembling Spoon, which is a very important artifact in this category. <coughs> it becomes <coughs> the Underworld. Yeah, he didn't do much, huh? He just kind of hung out with us. It's true. He's gonna... He's gonna hook us up with a few items after this event. So, after dropping the Underworld, we're gonna go north of Lumina and drop the wheel. Remember, we got the wheel from Tipo in Domino. The wheel is gonna become the highway. And this is called Niccolo's Business Unusual. There's actually multiple b Nick's Business Unusuals. There's like four or five of them. <clears throat> I think we only do one in this category, so here's this one. Luon Highway. So this is pretty much all battles. I really like this event because it's very battle heavy. And you're gonna, we're going to get to practice our power cancels a lot. There's Duel. He gets around. You're going to run right the whole time. There's no other way to go. I mean, there is, but we're just going to go right <clears throat> and I'm gonna be practicing my power cancel yeah I'm picking up everything as fast as I can oops okay I did a basic slash there at the end because I knew the rabbit didn't have very much health left so we, we're learning some SDs here that we're not going to use because we have the axe, but I uh, can't really... can't really avoid it. Okay, now, here you're going to stay to the top. You get, that's Diana. We'll meet her in other games, other categories, but uh, you just... 
There's a there's a lower route there by Diana that'll take you to Gaius, which is a, a um, uh, what is he called? Never mind. Stay to the top. I can't think. So you're seeing some different. Now you remember you could press start to see who you're fighting if you're interested. You got a level six stinger bug, a level six Shobin Hood, and a level six Lullabug. You see that jump cancel moved that enemy to the right, so that's what nice. We learned Tornado, that's an ST that we will use. Uh, one more battle. Okay, now at this point, you just saw that we learned Counterattack. You'll remember that after we learned Lunging Arc and Wind Slasher, and we got our axe, we changed our abilities to be Jump and Defend. And I mentioned that Defend would turn to Counterattack, and Counterattack would turn to Counter Strike. Well, with all the battles we just did with the axe, we just learned Counterattack, so we're going to definitely... Go ahead and hit start. <clears throat> we're gonna go down to skill. We're gonna go down to defend, and we're gonna. Uh, the fastest way is to press the up button, and there at the bottom is counterattack. And this time we do. We have learned some STs, so we're gonna go ahead and I like to put uh, deep slice here. It happens to be the first one on the list, so that's nice and fast. And then on L1, which is my uh, AOE, oops, we pick Tornado. Now here I don't press up, because if you press up, you might think like, oh, you press up, you go right to Tornado. No, it goes down here. So I just press down twice. And now I have Tornado, AOE, which is an AOE on my L1. I have Deep Slice, which is like just a really strong attack on R1. And then I'm using, oops, and then I'm using, uh-oh, what in the heck did I just do? What in the hell? Uh, I don't know what I did, but either way, we're, we're okay. So anyways, we're, we're leaving jump where it is. We changed uh, defend to counterattack. We dropped in deep slice and tornado. And we're going to continue to use L2 as our buffer to, to do power cancels. Um... And this is the s a second boss. We hold right and mash X through this. This guy's called the Mantis Ant or Mantis or something like that. We'll press start and see. Two Shobin Hoods here that work for the Mantis Ant. Uh, basically, this is what uh, Niccolo hired us to do, you know? He, w he wanted to make some money on this highway. There's too many bad guys, so here we are along for the ride to fight all these guys for him. This is level 6 Mantis Ant. Um, a really nice strategy is to jump cancel. We're just going to do a power cancel, which also works. <clears throat> We're super fast with our, with our Black Elk. Um, so basically just don't stop. Um, I might throw in a jump cancel here and there because if... It's nice. Mantis Ant will... You'll see his, his, his AI is weird. Like, sometimes he'll wander off to the right. Sometimes he'll come so close to you that it will lock you in over to the left. So if you don't... If you can't do jump cancels yet, I would just run towards him and, and hit square, and that will plunge attack him over. That's another way. You can see him just wandering off. Okay, we got him stuck on that rock, so I'm just going to power cancel over and over. And I think he'll... Okay, he's blocking. Sucks. Hey, he's dead. It doesn't take long. Um, this this kind of lighter area of sand here, there's a... Yeah, is a, a, a chest will fall. Pick up uh, experience as fast as you can, and you want to stop right here. Um, after battles, you, will, you want to study where 
the computer takes the character and try to be there already so that the computer doesn't have to walk you there. Just saves a little bit of time, a little optimization. So we shouldn't move much, if at all, with where we're standing. You can see that we kind of took a step or two, but basically in place. So we did good. And also, we don't have any control over this, but Niccolo was in the right spot too. So that's an added plus. That doesn't happen too often. Usually Niccolo's over to the right side of the screen and he has to slowly walk fucking all the way over to this spot. But this worked out nice. So he's like, yay, thanks for your help. He's going to give us some items. Uh, it's not really important. I don't think we're going to do anything with them. We, we, if in another category, we might sell those for some money, but... The only thing we're interested in are the artifacts. So he gives us flame and medallion. Two more artifacts. That's Nick's biz. So we'll split at the screen as the screen fades out. Uh, right here on the card. There we go. Fallen Emperor. So I need to take a bathroom break. Very quick. Won't take but a minute. Be right back. All right, we're back. So, what do we do next? So the next thing we do is we drop two artifacts. First, we go to the left of the highway. We're gonna mash square. We're gonna hit right a few times till we get to stone eye. Mash X, mash X, and drop the stone eye. The stone eye becomes Lake Kilma. We're never gonna enter Lake Kilma in this category, but We do have to drop this artifact. The way this game works is you have to have a certain number, it's like 20 or something, you have a certain number of artifacts on the map to beat the game. That's just the layman's way of explaining it. I'll try to explain it better later, but basically, sometimes we drop artifacts even if we don't need them just because of that reason. Then we're gonna go to the right of Lumina and drop the medallion, which is the jungle. And also, we do not enter the jungle, but we are dropping this for a specific reason in this place because the next place we're going to go is Lumina. We're going to go to a different part of Lumina that we weren't in before, and we're going to go pick up our pet, Guri. Very important to this run. So instead of going up, we're going to go left. We're gonna go stay on the bottom level and go behind the cafe. And hiding down here, down these stairs, is Guri. He's right here, you can't even see him. 
I'm Guri, a very evil and menacing goblin. Take me with you. I want to polish up on my evilness. Accept. Now, Guri is so awesome. I'm going to go into the start menu and show you why. Pet. Guri, goblin, level one. So, uh, I, something I haven't explained yet in battle is synchro effect. It's important to know that Guri's synchro effect during battle is attack plus slashing, which means that if we stand next to Guri in battle, he gives us extra slash power. I think it's like 50%. And you'll see it. You'll see the difference that it makes when we stand next to Guri in battle versus not standing next to it. So that's very important. And then we just leave the way we came. Um, and then we go left into the underworld. Left, X, X. Now, this category is called Dragon. And this is technically the first event in the Dragon storyline. First four events that we've done are just like filler. We get our axe, we get some artifacts on the, on the board, etc., etc to get to unlock the pet, you know. So now we're actually in the midst of the dragon storyline. Um, I, I was talking and we missed it, but there was like this spirit thing and, and, and it kind of disappeared right here. You want to run to that spot and mash X. And it says, warrior, I shall test your strength. And now we're starting the Fallen Emperor. We're gonna, it's gonna warp us down into the underworld. This is Lark, he's a, a Dragoon. So we're gonna select option one. He's like, if you wanna know more, you should come down below with me. Pardon me. And we're gonna go to option two, all right. It's often in times in this game, the, 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 the option yes or all right or accept is the second option, whereas Logic might, you might think, oh, well, wouldn't the first one be yes and the second one would be no? Wouldn't the first one be accept and the second one be reject? You gotta look out in this game because often it's the second one that's the uh, accept, so. It was that case there and it will be that case again. We go left, There's only one door. We're gonna go right down these stairs past these things. These are called shad holes. They hang out in the underworld. Uh, we're going to continue right as far as we can go. It's really the only way you can go. <clears throat> and then we're going to take the first door here. And we're going to continue up through this door. And then we're going to take the lower left. Oh, no, I'm sorry. We're going to go right again down the stairs. And we're going to take this lower left. There's going to be some copy here. He's going to go, hmm. I suppose we better go see Olbin. So we're going to go to the right, and we have nowhere to go all the way to the right to this only spot. I, notice that these look like doors, right? They kind of look like little caves or little doors. Well, they will be one day, but right now they're closed. But So for right now, we walk past all those little closed doors. And uh, we're going to find out about this Olbin guy. He is like the leader of the underworld or something. He... he He's a wisdom. That was the word I was looking for earlier. Wisdom. Manager of departed souls. He keeps the dead from getting out of hand. <laughs> so we take this first door. Um, we're going to run over to Olbin. That's him right there with all the different arms. Um, I'll, I'll make a note that you don't have to go all the way up to him like this to talk to him. <clears throat> you can go as <clears throat> early as like right here or here. Uh, that's not close enough, so it's a little bit of a, a skip, right? Like, you, you could stop yourself right here and mash X and talk to Olbin. A little, little bit of an optimization there. Um, blah, 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 I'm the Keeper of the Underworld. And uh, basically, we want to go... He's like, as a dragon, I must follow the will of my master. 
This time we've brought a quite a lively one, so will Dracona see will play and succeed now? I would love to help out if you have a nice spot for me. If you really mean it, then give permission to perform the Baptism of Flames. We're going to get the Baptism of Flames. Um, which is something... It sounds crazy, but it, it's... It's something that is going to allow us into deeper portions of this underworld. So we go talk to the Shad Hole. The underworld is a vast place. I can help you around. So he'll warp us to places like that so we don't have to worry about it. He goes, where do you, where you want to go? Where to? And you pick the Baptismal Chamber. So option two. Once the Baptism is done, closed doors will open. So remember, we talked about those doors that aren't open. This is what's going to help us get those open. So he warps us to the baptism. We 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 go around uh, counterclockwise to this shadow hole at the top and talk to him. And if we mash through, we'll get the baptism of flames. And then uh, it says, "Now you can go to the bottom levels. Let's go. Our master awaits. That's when you know you can leave. Take control. Navigate around those shadow holes." Now, you remember we've been in this room before, but we came in through the top door. So we want to, again, go down here to this, this exit. And now these doors are open. And we're going to take the second door on the right. I mean the second door. Whatever. The second door there. And you'll see now we can go down further. And we're going to fight two battles before the boss. We're getting close to a boss. Okay, so I don't know if you noticed, but I got a status element there that's pretty annoying. Um, it makes up, down, and left, right, etc. It's really annoying. So you just have to kind of like slow down and focus and do the opposite <coughs> if that ever happens. Kind of annoying. Uh, all the way to the end. It's only one exit. <laughs> We're going to do the exact same thing. We're going to go to the right, fight a battle, and then go through the door. up all this experience, and we're going to learn Counter-Strike here. So, you remember again, Defend becomes Counter-Attack, Counter-Attack becomes Counter-Strike. Now that's it. We're, we're done learning abilities now. So that's the good news. So we hit Start, go down to Skill, go to Counter-Attack, press up, Counter-Strike. That's it. Then Start to get out of the menu. Then we go through the store. Now, here again, you want to be careful. He says, now we shall see if you are worthy enough to serve my master. And he says, are you ready? Hey, be ready because it's going to be option two for I am ready. So if you're mashing real fast and you match the first one, you're going to have to redo this. And if that does happen, it's not a big deal. All you do is you, you walk back into the door to prompt that message. Okay, this is a doozy of a boss. Let me see if I can explain him. So... Basically, you just want to go in and try to power cancel the shit out of him. Uh, he will disappear. By the way, this guy's name is Hidodama. And he will disappear just whenever he feels like it. It's really annoying. We just want to get as much damage on him <clears throat> as we can while he's, a, while he's appeared. While he's not disappeared. And if we can stand next to Guri while doing it, the better. The faster the, the battle will go. Um, when he disappears... The faces in the room are going to throw attacks at us, so we're going to run to the right and hide in the corner where we can't get hit until it stops, and then we're going to come back out and try again. So that's our strategy. So this little flying ghost-looking thing, fire, flame thing, that's Hidodama, level 3. And he disappeared right away. It's super annoying. It happens all the time. So, see the synchro at the top, the electricity? That's good. That means we're, we're taking like, double damage almost on him. Like We did real good. This is a, a decent Hidodama battle, okay? Uh, you can see that there's not very much life left down there. <clears throat> but uh, 
I paused the screen in a perfect spot to show the synchro. Because I'm standing, and every character has their own synchro, okay? Every playable or AI partner will have one. Again, Guri's is slash damage is increased. Lark's, I believe, is slash damage is increased on dragons, specifically. So you can see that because we're standing right next to Lark in battle, the electricity is connecting between my little diamond and his little diamond. That's the synchro active right there. So that's what that indicates. So we're going to stay out of the harm's way. Then we're going to pop back over and try to finish him off. Oh, we almost did. We almost did. But this is the way Hidodama goes. It's really annoying. We should be able to finish him off on this one, hopefully. Now, if it takes... What was this? The s second or third ST? I can't remember. On the fourth one, it's he does a longer, uh, um, annoying one. So you really want to try to kill him in two or three. It's never any guarantees. It's all RNG. You just got to do the best you can. But I'm really hoping we can kill him right here. There we go. Oh, come on. Got him. Okay. Whew. So here's me uh, doing some power cancel practice. See how there's no... Okay, we got to pick up our experience. No cooldown when you do it right. Um, basically mash through this cutscene. There's going to be a point where you want to select the right option. So he's like, prepare yourself, Master Cometh, Lord Draconis. Here's Draconis, his master. And, uh, blah, blah, blah. He talks about, um, who he is and what he's doing, etc. Select option one, ask why. And, uh, Draconis is going to speak again. It's going to be two text boxes. I could not stand letting so strong a warrior fade away. If you defeat the three dragons, I'll return you to your previous form. After that is the this box, where you're going to go to the second option. Like I said, it's all, it always seems to be the second option. Except. And that completes the Fallen Emperor, pretty much. We'll just mash X through the rest of this. I believe we'll get an artifact. Can't remember. Uh, I think we might have already got it, and I and I wasn't paying attention. Cool. So that's the first event in the dragon story. What do we get? Do we get anything? So we might have gotten these two. The broken doll and the skull lantern. I think we did. So from the underworld, we go down twice. Boop. Boop. Hello, home hit square and we're gonna normally that would drop right here i think we're gonna tap to the right to get to the skull lantern we're gonna drop that right there that becomes norn peaks samato what up man how you doing yeah doing a tutorial uh and then we go to the right once we hit square we pick the broken doll drop the broken but we're gonna go into norn peaks This is a really hard event. So we hit left once to get to Norm Peaks. Mash X. Walk to that uh, area. And then we mash X again to enter. Yeah, this is a beast of a level right here. Um, We're going to meet Sierra here. So we have Lark and Guri in tow with us, which is cool. Uh, they're both, they both can help. I mean, they can, they can sometimes be a hassle, but they can totally do cool stuff during battle. Uh, we don't have any control over it. It's all RNG, but whatever. Or AI. Guardian of Winds. So there's Sierra. Sierra is Lark's 
sister. She also is a dragon, but for a different dragon. Go to the right. There's going to be some battles here. Now, something to note. A lot of times in this game, it's it's uh, it's like a built-in challenge. You can see that <clears throat> some of the foreground uh, foliage or graphics will uh, make it hard to see what's going on. It's there's nothing you can do about it. You just have to like learn where things are and try your best. Um, but right now, we're going to be battling this I Spy, and he's probably going to disappear from view. You can see it kind of sucks, because you um, can't really see what's going on. And we're going to go down. That's the only way to go. And what's next? Another battle? Okay. Let me just warn you guys. This this thing right here, this shriek nip that looks like an eggplant, one of the most annoying enemies in the game. He will mess you up, dude. Just warning you. Try to kill him first and be quick about it. He will mess your world up. It's one of those things you gotta experience before you really get it. So you just go to the right. Basically, you're just going to the right the whole way there. Okay, here we are, the Village of Winds. This is the base of the mountain. These birds are called wind callers. Here's what we're gonna do: is we're gonna run to this spot right here, and we're gonna pause one second or so because we want Lark to catch up. The reason we want Lark to catch up is because in a moment he's going to walk very slowly up this uh, passage. And so the closer we can get to right here, the better. If, if we run to the spot we're in and immediately start talking to these wind callers and Lark is like still behind this birdhouse, then it's going to take that much longer, you know? So that's just a small optimization. He's going to gonna be like, fuck you guys, I'm gonna walk up the hill. Very slowly. So once he says, here I come, that's when we walk up the mountain. Okay, here we go. This first battle, something to note. Um, if you have the Earth Splitter equipped here, you're more than likely not going to have your ST ready. The, there's three Shriek Nips right here. They're a pain in the butt. If you kill them super quick, they're not a problem. But even But you never know what's going to happen, and they can mess your world up. When, uh, when you have, it's it's so weird. It's like when you have the air splitter, you don't have an ST fully loaded usually, which the the AOE for the air splitter is better and reaches more ground. But we don't have it ready. But when you have the black elk, you typically do have it ready. But it's a smaller AOE and it doesn't work quite as well. So it's kind of a it's kind of a hard area. So I'm not sure until we start the battle what to do, because I want to see what our ST is like. But you can see these little shriek nips underground hanging out. There's one there, like one there, and then there's even another one that's off screen, I think, right now. Okay, we do have our ST. So you'll see my character, so, so at the top, okay, you got Lark, then in the middle is me, and then on the right-hand side is Guri. You'll notice that <clears throat> Guri doesn't have an ST bar. Lark does, but his is only like a quarter filled. But you can see that mine's fully filled and flashing. You're going to look for that flash. If it's flashing, then you know you're S you have an ST ready to go. So I'm going to try my best to kill the first two. I, I may or may not be able to get this third one with my ST, but... Uh, 
you know. Sometimes even if you have your Black Elk, you don't have an ST loaded, and you gotta attack these guys with regular attacks. We'll see what happens. So I hit L1 there to, to start Tornado. Looks like we got those two. Okay, so what I did there was a plunge attack followed by a power cancel. The reason it plunged was because I was running when I hit square. Now we don't have any ST, so we're just going to power cancel everybody. Or whiff. <laughs> Pick up our items as quickly as possible, and now we go up the hill. It's the only way to go. And then this screen is nothing except going up a hill. Okay. Here's our first wind collar fight, and uh, these guys are kind of a pain. First of all, we don't have control here. It's going to walk us up to this point and say, Thou shalt not pass. As soon as we mash through this wind collar's text, the battle's going to begin. Uh, I would say 80% of the time, I don't, I don't know the exact amount, but most of the time he's going to start off with a pretty devastating ST. So you want... I personally run to the left if he starts his ST to avoid him and wait till it's over, because if you get caught in it, it's like 15 seconds of, of you being immobile. If he doesn't, that's the ideal situation, and we immediately can run behind him. Remember how I said that um, a good strategy for most of these enemies is to attack the enemy towards your exit. After this battle's over, we're going to be going left. So I'm going to go to the right of this wind caller and attack him and try to get him over to the left. But the first things first, we're going to see if he's going to do an ST or not. And he is, so I'm going to avoid that. It's devastating. You'll see what it's going to do to... Okay, now look at the damage when I stand next to Guri. Anyways, this is a good example of a good battle because even though we started off with an ST, we were able to get behind him. We were able to jump cancel him to the left. You could also plunge attack if you don't know how to jump cancel. And then we, Guri stood next to us the whole time, so that really went pretty ideal. We have two more of these guys to fight. Um, so you can see that a little ghost spirit uh, left... Later, we'll see that by killing three wind callers, we're going to uh, kind of dissipate a barrier um, so we can get through and get up to the blue dragon. So now we're going left for a few screens. I don't think there's anything going on on this screen. We just go left, left, left. And then right here, it's three more shriek nips. So we should have our ST loaded, and we're going to try very hard to kill them with that. I'm going to get in the middle of them. It was two Shriek Nips and a Imp. And yeah, that went well. That got everybody. So that's how I typically deal with those guys. Pick up our experience. And keep going left. Uh, this screen also doesn't have anything going on. You just want to go left. And now we get to our second Wind Caller. So this is very identical to the last Wind Caller battle. Except this time we're going to talk to him or we're going to initiate battle and we're gonna try to get him over to the right hand side because that's our next exit oops you can see that my other characters have a mind of their own and they you know like lark i can't control what he does so he was attacking my wing collar to the left a bit which isn't what i wanted so you have to kind of like you know you kind of have to like deal with that you know so we're going back the way we came right which means we, ha we have to fight these guys again same deal stand in the middle do a tornado or a uh, flying saw blades flying saw blades is the earth splitter version of tornado Cool. 
Um, and then on the next screen is when we're going to start going up the mountain. So we go about a third, of, uh, two thirds of the way over, and then we start going up. Don't exit to the right. I'm going to go up. Uh, another battle. I'm picking up stuff while the other stuff is spawning and dropping, you know, I'm trying to make the most of it. <clears throat> okay, <clears throat> when we go to the right, this is very important. You can see this cutout on the on the ledge. That's a cue that this statue, you see that bird statue there? You want to avoid that like the plague, okay? If you touch that statue or get near it, I, I don't even get near it because I don't even know. I don't even want to know. But if you talk to that statue or touch that statue, it will warp you back to the beginning. Oh, we're getting a raid. Hey! Hey, what's up, Mav? How you doing, man? How was BlizzCon? I think so, the raid coherent noise. How did your co-op run go? I was kind of lurking for a bit. Rooting for you guys. Whoa! For real? Did you guys PB? God, I bet that was exciting. Damn. Please tell me you guys PB'd. And I thought I heard you saying something about jump cancel. You, did you throw some jump cancels in there? Good practice, though. Okay, cool. That's great, Vec. Well, I am proud of you guys. That's badass. You guys went for the diamond skip and it happened. That is sweet. Okay. Oh, cool. Yeah, yeah. Jump castle's great when you get, once you get them down. Dude. Well, grats. That's great. Oh, okay. Cool. Yeah, focus on that boss, man. Um, I'm glad you had fun at, at, uh, at BlizzCon. Okay, so I was just saying that you want to avoid this stone bird. Because if you touch it or talk to it or whatever, it will warp you back to the beginning of this level and it's pretty much a rip run. Okay, gotcha. Maybe next time. Um, so there will be a point because we've killed two out of three wind callers. Once we kill the third wind caller, this bird will, we can go talk to it and get it to go away, the barrier to go away. But right now you want to avoid it. So we just stay right. And then you're going to see a similar break in the side of the mountain. And there's going to be two... What are these guys called? They look like Abominable Snowman. They're called Narcissus. Interesting. Um, so these guys... You can kill them however you want to. Um, sometimes I like to take a bit of a, a risk and counter-strike them. Because they're pretty counter strikable So maybe I'll show off what Counter-Strike does. Um, right now, I have loaded Counter-Strike into Circle. So if I stand next to the enemy, and I hold Circle... What up, Chrono? 231, okay. Oh, you guys PB'd last week. I might have missed that. I'm really glad you guys PB'd last week. That's pretty cool. Okay, sounds good, Chrono. Enjoy, man. Um, so I loaded counter. Remember, we 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 equip defend. Defend got us counter attack, and then we equip counter attack, and <clears throat> counter attack got us <clears throat> counter strike right before we fought Hidodama. Uh, counter strike isn't used a ton. It's mainly important for the final boss, the Mana Goddess. But there are places where, if you're comfortable, you can use it throughout the game, and I'm, this is one of them, so I might try to do it. Basically, you stand in front of the enemy with your axe. If you, if you press circle, you'll kind of like act like you're about to attack. You'll kind of like hold, a, hold this motion, and, and you're basically wanting to counter. It's not counter-attack. It's called counter-strike, but it's like a counter-attack in that it's, you want to be hit. You're waiting for the attack, and as soon as Narcissus hits you, you're going to follow up with a very strong... Excuse me, a very strong attack. It's called Counter-Strike, and it's really cool. Um, this particular boss, being level 8, or not boss, this particular enemy, um, since we have the 
Black Elk, which isn't quite as strong as the Earth Splitter, we probably won't one-shot it. So I'm really just showing this off more to show you guys what Counter-Strike does and how to how to achieve it. Um, but if you ha just a note, if you if you did get the Earth Splitter drop, it will one-shot this guy. It's pretty cool. Okay, so he's being a total dick. There we go. That was a counter strike. Sometimes you got to go in and attack them, and provoke them. There's another counter strike. You can see that it's a. You're waiting for them to attack, and once they attack, the counter strike goes off. Sometimes I have to mash circle a couple of times because sometimes I just sit there and mash circle, honestly, because it doesn't hurt anything. But it does hurt if you mash it once or hold it down. And then you you um, doze off, or you're not paying attention because it has a a a uh, it has a lifespan of a few seconds, so it doesn't last forever. So if you constantly mash circle, then you're going to constantly be in Counter Strike mode. So I tend to do that, so that if I'm not paying attention, I'll get my Counter Strike no matter what. Okay, here's our third and final wind caller strike. Same deal. To the right, talk to it. Try to get it over to the left, which is where our exit is. Hope that Guri comes and stands next to me. Because when he does, we get our synchro. But I'm just power canceling away. Square and square followed up by L uh, L2. Okay, so you'll see uh, Lark here. He says, I knew it was some sort of barrier. So he just, we, the noise that we heard there was that gray statue that we, I was talking about earlier. So exit left. We're going to have to fight these guys again, so we might try another Counter-Strike again. Well, they don't always cooperate. Ooh, Boulder Dash is pretty cool looking. That's one of Lark STs. So, if we, the very next screen is that screen I told you guys to avoid. Uh, but now we shouldn't be afraid. Now that we've killed those three wind callers, we can safely see. You don't even have to talk to it. You just have to touch it. That's why it's so dangerous. <clears throat> so, but you, as you can see, the barrier is now gone, and we can continue up the mountain. Uh, another battle. Tornado works well here. Just try to get in the center. So I just mashed L L1. We're probably going to have to follow up an attack. Yeah, this guy is so strong that with the uh, tornado, the way it is, Black Elk isn't quite as strong as Earth Splitter, so you gotta, you're gotta. you always going to have to do an extra attack on that Narcissus. Um, two imps here. Uh, which I hate imps because they fly. They're very annoying. My strategy here is to attack the left imp first and the right imp second. And I only use X. Um, it just works better for me because they're flying around. And I feel like I'm faster and I have more control. So we'll see how it works out. Two Xs. And they're dead, pretty much. That took an extra one. Those things fly around so crazily that the X seems to work good for me. This is a cutscene. Small note, it's one of the two loudest parts of the game, so if you're wearing headphones, you really should be cautious. It's very loud. Okay, so as soon as I say or he says, listen to the strong. That's your cue. You can leave. Go to the left. Um, and some more Narcissus. I like to stay far away from those guys because um, they will get you. If, if you're too close, they'll get you. They'll troll you. There's that level up. So even though we're done, that was a good example of level up. So even though we were we had completed picking up all of our experience and money, it still wasn't. It still we still didn't get the spoil screen because of that level up, taking a few seconds to cool down. Two birds and then we fight the blue dragon. Oof! 
See, I used X there because he was trolling me. Sometimes you gotta use X to really to, to, to just disrupt the enemy. It's a faster than the power cancel. <clears throat> okay, this boss is extremely challenging. You wanna run over to the left as fast as you can. And the blue dragon's gonna come down. Uh, his name is Acravator. Acravator. I have come for your mana in my master's stead. So this boss sucks, okay? I'm telling you what. I've had the best runs die to this boss so many times. He's so challenging. You never know what he's going to do. As soon as we begin the battle, he could turn to stone. He could totally block everything that's coming, and you're just wasting time. There's nothing you can do about it. So good luck with this boss, you know. Uh, there's different methods. I think a lot of good runners jump cancel this this guy, which is what I might do. Uh, also, if you're risky, if you're feeling confident, you could try to counter strike because he will whip his tail at you, and that's a good opportunity to counter strike. But it's kind of risky. You're really better off power canceling or jump canceling him. Um, the only other thing I'm going to do is there's a particular ST that he'll do where it's a good opportunity to do, um, what's it called? Deep Slice, which is, I have an R1. Um, he's, he might do this ST where there's these lit up circles on the ground. That's the one I'm talking about. And that's a good opportunity to land it. A deep slice or if you're using the earth splitter what's it called i can't remember what the st is called but if you're using the earth splitter it's something else so anyways we'll see what happens okay so as you can see he he went into block right away i can't even do any damage and look at this so this is the frustration of Acrovator. The battle's been going for 20 seconds and I haven't made any progress at all. Okay, now, okay. So he does a few things. This thing that he's doing right now, I think, I hope I'm calling it right, is just going to blow wind at us. And it sucks because it spins you around and it slows you down. I think you take a little damage. You definitely, is a cooldown period where you, you don't have control of your character. The best way I know to avoid it is just to get behind him. So that's what I'm going to do. Uh, although I don't think I did a good job. It looks like I got... <laughs> looks like I'm, I fucked that up. Okay. So, so far this battle sucks. Okay, because... He immediately went into block mode. Couldn't do any damage. He flew over us. And went into block mode again. Couldn't do any damage. Then he started doing the the wind blow deal. Can't do any damage during there. Okay, so it's like we're not really getting anywhere yet. <laughs> Here he is again with his shit. Hopefully I can For some reason I can't get around him and I keep getting hit by it. So I'm not I'm not showing that off well. Hopefully he'll do that one ST. This is going... That's That went pretty well. That's what you want is, like, a good period of attack. We can really... Now you see how I'm standing next to Guri as well? Okay. This... Oops. That was a counter-strike moment that I missed. Did you see how he, he either kicked with his leg or his tail? I can't remember. But if you're standing there and holding circle, that would have dealt a pretty nice blow. Uh, there, there's a couple of things he still hasn't done. Keeps doing this shit. Oof. Okay, we finally avoided that one. You can see that I didn't get touched by that. Oops, and I accidentally hit Tornado. That's a mistake. But it hit, so that's cool. He's almost dead. And Jesus. So, okay. Okay. Oof. So this might be another thing he does. It looks like he's about to do the wind deal, but... He also does this thing where it looks like he's about to do that, but what in fact is he disappears off the screen and then 
he flies through with fire and just wrecks you. The only thing I know how to do here is like, depending on, like, since he's leaping off the ground from low, from, okay, there's not much of a stage here, but you can see that he's kind of on the bottom half based on his shadow. I think that means that when he does the flyover with the fire, it'll be more in the lower half. So when so if that's the case, I try to just right now where I'm standing is actually not a bad spot. I'm hoping that that'll work for me. Yeah. So here he comes with a fire, and you can see it missed me because I did just like I said. I he was on the lower half, so I went to the top, blew over with fire on the lower half, and I missed it because I was standing at the top. He can do the opposite where. He's at the top, he'll fly over on the top, and you'll want to go to the bottom. So that's the strategy there. He still hasn't done the ST to allow me to do a deep slice. I don't know if that's going to happen. I'm hoping as soon as I press start that I'll have an upper, uh, another opportunity to power cancel or jump cancel him. Yep. Oh, but then he went. So you can see that we only have like that much left health, but he went into defense mode. So it's a heck of a battle, dude. Okay, see... Nothing I can do. Yeah. This is a bullshit battle. Very frustrating. But since we're doing tutorials, not so bad. And he's dead. So that's aggravator for you. So like a perfect aggravator would be like just power cancel him over and over. Maybe he gets one flyover, you know. It, it can happen. But, uh... You never know what you're going to get with him. Pick up your experience. You want a little optimization that I like is to stand next to Lark as close as possible. Because let's say that Lark was on the far left of the screen and I was on the far right. Well, if this scene ends, Lark's going to come over to me. That's just how it is. He's going to walk over to me. So the closest I can be to Lark, the better. The less distance he has to walk to me. So, he shouldn't move at all right here. Yeah. So that's what you want. Just stay next to Lark. Kind of hard sometimes. Um, there's the mana crystal that we're going to steal for Draconis. And we got the artifact Dragon Bone. That's actually the next artifact that we're going to drop. And we got Toma Magic, which um, becomes Geo. We don't actually enter Geo in this story. But we will drop the Tome of Magic. <laughs> Guardian wins. Okay. Build trip. This is a, the shortest event in the... It's probably like two minutes long. <clears throat> shortest event in the game. You go south, hit square, tap right, one time, X, X. And then you enter. Uh, uh, bone Fortress. So we've killed the blue dragon. Next, we're going to kill... Oh, yeah, we killed Hidadama, and we killed the blue dragon. Now we're going to kill the bone dragon. But not on this event, the next one. <clears throat> this is a very short event called the field trip. First thing you do is talk to this green person right here. We go to the cabbage match. We're working on triple reagent mixing assignment. Miss blah blah blah. None of this really matters. We just want to get to the part where she says, and I'll mix them. As soon as you hit X, you run to the right. Okay. And you run to the left. We're just going in and out. It's going to automatically walk over and talk to uh, this person again. She says, I'd appreciate it if you could bring back some regents, please. I'm not really sure why we do all this, but this is what we do. We, now we now we can go back in and we're gonna speak to three specific individuals <clears throat> we're gonna talk to this blue person at the top 
we're going to talk to this light pink girl and this dark pink male. And then it'll automatically take those three ingredients. And if we've done it right, there'll be like a green explosion. Yellow, green explosion. So we did it. If you don't get it right, it's like smoke or something colored and you have to go do it. Go try again. So she's going to give us a seed and then that's it. That's that's that, that's that's how it goes, man. It's like I don't know. I don't know how long that event is. It's not very long though. Uh, then we enter the Bone Fortress again. So you'll recall at the beginning of the game, we had to grind for an axe. Well, now we have to grind for a sword. And uh, the percentage of <clears throat> chance that that sword will drop is, is significantly lower than the axe drop. So it can be very frustrating. Especially when you get better at the game and you, you're trying to PB, it can be very frustrating. Um, just mash through all this copy. I'll show you guys when to look. Uh, we, we, there'll be a point where we're going to want to go back to the right, like in the last event. It'll be, the screen will kind of shake, you'll hear the roar of something. Oh, I guess the screen didn't shake. But everybody jumps. You hear that scream. She says, whoa. And that's that's our cue. We have control now. We go to the right. This is a cutscene. This is very important. By the way, I love this cutscene. I think the animation is so cool. Like, <clears throat> this knight comes out of, like, another realm. It's like a, a split in time. Look at that. It's so cool. Uh, Ghost of Nemesis type comes in. Mash X to get that to go away. Very important here. You want to be careful. This is another one of those instances where you're going to pick option two. And you just want to make sure you're not mashing so fast that you accidentally pick option one. Because if you do, the same animation is going to happen. He's going to go back in through the portal, time portal. And you're going to have to leave and come back to get this animation to go again. You want to make sure you get it right the first time. <clears throat> so you want to say stay. Option two. Uh, then you, we're gonna fight this guy. And like many other battles, we're going to try to get him to the right side, kind of in a corner. Um, you could do that with plunge, you could do that with jump attack, a jump cancel. Um, that's the, that's an ideal strategy. Um, it, it's kind of hard to explain, but like, you can use Counter-Strike very effectively here, especially if he's in a corner. Um, I might try to use some Counter-Strike so you can see. But like a perfect Black Knight. Actually, I don't know. What is this guy called? I'll try to do a perfect Black Knight. It's, it may not work. Skeletal Soldier. This guy's level 10 Skeletal Soldier. Um, here's what I'm going to try to do. I'm going to try to jump, cancel him into the corner, either below or above this that, that bone skull you see there. That's actually a doorway. A gate, if you will. And I can do two things once I've got him cornered. I can just power cancel or jump cancel the shit out of him. <clears throat> or, because he's going to do two things. He's going to either keep shooting like a distance weapon at me. Or he's going to slide his feet at me. Which is a great counter-strike opportunity, right? So it's really hard. You just have to kind of like practice a lot and try to see what he's going to do and act accordingly. So, you know, here we go. Okay, so I could have Counter-Strike there and I missed it. There, we, There's a Counter-Strike. Okay. So there's... Okay, so... So, not getting many Counter-Strike opportunities. Uh, well. I'm just gonna... Just gonna jump cancel him to death. Um, I'm gonna stand right here, right next to the mouth. And then, I like to just mash X and hold up at the same time. 
if I'm standing in the right spot, which I'm not, so you want to be like right here, yeah, then you'll just, you'll immediately walk up into the mouth. You're going to run forward and touch. All you got to do is touch it. I didn't even hit X. Touch that button right there. Looks like some kind of trap. And then um, we're going to fall through a door or something. Some sort of trap happened. Uh, when you wake up, you go south. And this is where we start our Brave Blade grind, which is a, so a two-handed sword. It's very strong. I think it has like 37 attack. Um, for reference, our Black Elk has 26, so we're going to add 11 attack to this, I believe. It might be more than 37, but it's at least 37. So it's a significant upgrade. But we already have an ST, so let's just use that. So optimal, ideal situation here is that an item will drop. If you've been paying attention, the... The sack, the brown sack, is the item. Uh, and then the little blue things are experience crystals, and the little small gold things are the lucre, the money. So we're looking for a sack to drop, because that means it's a sword. Now, I think there's two swords drop here. It's the throat slitter or the brave blade. So even though we might get an item, it may not be the sword we want. So we're hoping for an item, and then we're hoping that item is a brave blade. If we get a Brave Blade, that's optimal. We go ahead and equip it, and we that's our final weapon for the rest of the game. It's very powerful. If we don't get it, we can move on with the story, with the level. But eventually, we'll be coming back here, and we got to grind till we get that Brave Blade. So we're hoping to get it now. Let's see what happens. We didn't get it. We pick this stuff up, and we go left. Whoop. You're going to go talk to this skull. Uh, mash, stand next to it, mash X, and you'll see the flame come down. And uh, <coughs> the skull's going to talk to you. So you youngins were trapped here in the Bone Fortress too. I'll help you out. I'm going to open the door for you. If you're ever lost, just ask any... Uh, just ask my friends, they'll help you out. As soon as you clear this text, that's when you can take uh, control and go left. Beck is telling me to pick up my movement game after watching you. <laughs> yeah. I mean, if it's any consolation, it took me two years to get my movement down, and it's still not perfect. <laughs> but, yeah, thank you, Beck. So here we go left, and we talk to this. This looks like another skeletal soldier. As soon as you talk to him, he opens the door for you and points the way. So you remember that um, we had a... Um, when we walked into the Bone Fortress, we had a trap. So I got split up with uh, Guri and Lark. We all split up. Uh, Guri is like in this little trap. So now we're saving him. We're picking him up. All you do is just run at him. I think you might, you might have to mash X, might not. I can't remember. And you leave. Now we just have to go get Lark. And then we're good. So we're going the way we came. We go down or right. And then down again. So you remember this skull? Down again. And we're back where we came from. <clears throat> so here we are. Uh, I don't... We, we, we won't have an ST, so we're just going to have to power cancel these guys. Okay. Okay. No items. That's okay. You know, we're doing a tutorial. But unfortunately, we need to leave and come back. We need to... Yes, it totally does. And I just took the time to pause and see what they're called. I think they're called Skeletal Soldiers. They're some of my favorite... They're some of the coolest looking characters. But it's the exact same soldier looking character from Drowned Dream. Absolutely. Um, so let's try again. Fingers crossed. This will be our third try. <gasps> we got an item. There's one item. We won't know what it is till we're finished. Brave Blade. So that's what you want, okay? When your spoil says Brave Blade, then you're loving it. You can move on. That's like the most exciting part of the game. So in three tries, we got a Brave Blade. That's actually pretty good. You could you could do a decent run with a three-try Brave Blade. Because if you notice, 
when you come in here for the first time, you know, you if you don't get it, you still have to go left do and pick up Guri. And you still have to come back through. So if you get it on the second try, it's kind of like getting it on the first try. You know what I mean? So really, it's kind of like we got it on the second try, even though it's the third try. So pretty happy for tutorial percent it's pretty good so now we hit start we go to equip just like before we go to auto select just like before um you can see that if we were to go to equip we do have a few items now we picked up a true spear a spiral claw so the bray blade is the strongest weapon in here oh there it is 37 so just like i thought 37 so we're gonna go from 26 to 37 right yeah so you save one step by hitting auto select. And then it removed our ST, so we gotta go into skill. We're never gonna jump, we're never gonna touch these again. Jump, counter strike, are good to go. <clears throat> and you'll remember when we beat Do Ink at the beginning? Yeah, basically like, yeah. Plus first try. Um, remember at the very beginning of the game, we beat Do Ink with a two handed sword, and we learned Wind Slasher and Lunging Art. Well, we're now that we have our two handed sword, we're gonna drop those in again. <clears throat> so, Lunging Art. Now, you might think that pushing up would get you to the bottom. So, don't do that, because as you can see, it didn't get me anywhere. So, I just go down twice. Bam. Now, that's my AoE Wind Slasher. And you hit start, and you're off to the races. Oops. Yeah, and we have, uh, we're up at, uh, what's our attack? 37. So pretty damn strong. Um, I think the hammer, the gold hammer in Fairy is like 43, or... I don't know. Run to the left of this little button, and Guri will run to the right, and it'll open this door. This is an elevator, actually. So we picked up Guri. We got the Brave Blade. Now we're going to go save Lark. Um, my strategy here, which Baron showed me a nice way, you just hold, don't, just walk here, actually. Hold left and walk, and you'll run into this flame. Just mash X. Because if you run in here, you're more than likely you might you might run past the flame by accident. So I just run or walk diagonally there. So you youngins were trapped here in the Bone Fortress too. I'll help you out. Hmm? Where do you want to go? So after where do you want to go, you mash X, and then you select third floor. You're always gonna select second or third floor, I think. We'll, we'll double check. Okay. So you guys remember Sierra Lark's sister? We're gonna have to fight her. He's like, are you looking for Lark? By the way, this battle with her is very similar to the skeletal soldier that we fought earlier, so... A good strategy is to try to get some counter-strikes in while standing next to Guri. But if she doesn't cooperate, then you might just have to start power-canceling her. Uh, you want to pick option two here. And then we'll start the battle. Okay, when she does that da -da 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 crap, that's a good opportunity to hold down circle and get your counter strike in. And we were standing next to Guri, which means, um, well, we didn't get it that time, but we almost got the Guri. That time we got the Guri buff. Oh, and we got her. So you can see it took three hits, or three hits plus like a slash. So. You can do four perfect counter strikes. I've done it before. I think I've only done it once out of, uh, you know, several hundred runs. But you can do four perfect counter strikes next to Guri, and that's optimal, and it goes by so fast. It's awesome. We learned Shield Breaker, but we don't need it. That's just uh, something we just learned. Okay, she's like, by the god, your powers are too strong. <clears throat> so basically, she was <clears throat> blocking us from going to get Lark. So now that we've defeated her, we can go get Lark. But... You can barely see it. It's just peeking out from behind that pillar. Um, there's a key there. It's very important. I have forgotten to pick that key up, and then I didn't have it, and I had to turn back around and go get it. So make sure to pick the key up. You'll hear a noise, and it says you receive a key. Then you go back into the elevator. Remember, I'm going to walk and mash X, and then second floor. So you're always just picking what's underneath cancel, essentially. So I just tap down once, 
each time and you'll be good. Third floor, second floor. We go to the left. And we talk to this skeletal soldier. He opens the door for us to the left. And then we hold left and mash X. And we got Lark. So now we say we uh, rescued Fury, we rescued Lark, we got our Brave Blade, <clears throat> we got we killed Sierra, or we 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 didn't kill Sierra, we we injured her, I suppose. So now we go back into the um, elevator, and yep, third floor. So now comes a gauntlet of bosses. We're almost done with this level. And yeah, we got three bosses to fight. Um, really, it's just two, but the second boss has like a, 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 a two iterations. <clears throat> so this first guy is named Deathbringer. And we're just going to power cancel slash jump cancel him. He has a couple of STs. They're not really that scary. I'll try to show you what to do depending on which one you get. Or you might get both. I usually run towards him and plunge first. Okay. So, I'm not sure what he's going to do. This a level 11 Deathbringer. Uh, because he paused there, you could tell he's about to do an ST. Um, he usually does two S uh, one of two. One, one of them is like a... Like a... Uh, like a a bit of a explosion or something below him. So if you're standing real close, so regardless, I'm going to walk away because I'm not sure which one he's going to do, excuse me, do yet, but he'll either do one that's kind of like the ground underneath him, like having a little bit of an earthquake and it doesn't last long. Or he throws some sort of Japanese letters at you. I don't get it, but if it happens, you'll see what I'm talking about. Either way, you just kind of want to get out of the way. Okay. So that is, this is the shortest of the STs, and it's not that bad. So you can see what's happening. Ba -ba 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 -ba. We come in and finish him off. Pretty much. Hopefully Guri comes stands next to me. That would be really nice. Okay. You can see I, I was afraid he was going to go into another ST, so to finish him off, I just did X real quick, uh, the quick slash, because I knew he was almost done. He's going to drop some experience. We'll pick that up. And then just stay kind of like right in here because you're going to be going to the right. Uh, right here, you're looking for Lark to say that I guess I don't either or some shit like that. But I suppose that neither do I. As soon as you clear that, <clears throat> you have control. I'm going to hit pause because I want to explain something real quick. Okay, so... This is the last boss. He has two iterations. Uh, the last boss of this level. So as soon as we beat him, we'll get the mana crystal. We'll get some. We might get some artif an artifact or two. I think we get one artifact called Green Cane, and uh, we can split. Um, yeah, I probably won't explain what I'm about to do, but I will pause and talk about the boss. There's a little optimization I'm going to try to do, but it's really not worth mentioning at this point. So this is the Bone Dragon. His uh, The name is also Jajara. And we'll kill him once. We'll come back in a slightly different form. We'll kill him again. And you want to use Jump Cancel, Power Cancel, whatever, to, to get as much... <clears throat> uh, I think we already have an ST loaded, which is good. So as soon as Jajara goes into their ST, we'll also prepare an ST. At least we'll try so I know I have an ST prepared because I haven't used one in a while, and we just did a bunch of power it cancels on on uh, Deathbringer. You can see it flashing up there. Okay, so you can see that the Bone Dragon stopped, and he's about to do his, his deal. So... The way it works with him, so he's facing this way. He's 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 facing the left side of the screen. So he's going to, I think he's going to kind of jump back a little bit, 
but he's going to breathe this massive, like, electricity fire thing at me. Oh, cool. Oh, cool. Thanks, Vec. Yeah, that makes me feel really good. Um, I'm definitely going to highlight that this, and uh, and I sure hope that it helps somebody out there. Um, I'm I'm I am kind of like I know that there's a space, there's a place out there for a more intermediate or a more like moderate to high level play. So I'm trying to keep this more like beginner. I'm probably explaining more than I should, but I'm trying to keep it more beginner. Um, he's about to do his ST. We're going to try to avoid the beginning of it and then settle up for a lunging arc. Let's see if I can make it happen. Okay. Okay, so he's about to spit flames or whatever. Sometimes right as he does it, he jumps back and like his tail and everything will go out of view. I'm not sure if he's going to do that or not. Yeah, okay, so you see what he did? He he moved back. Um, so I want to kind of position myself. I might even be able to stand where I am right now. I'm just right outside his shadow, if you can see. Um, but I'm just going to hit R and do a lunging arc kind of around the time that he stops breathing flames. I'm, I'm hoping that this will work. Usually I'm not pausing and talking and it just works out. So if I whiff, it's, you know, whatever. But typically you want to try to land an ST here. Okay, he moved, so I'm going to whiff. So, lesson learned. After he finishes bringing the fire, sometimes he'll jump fucking, like, feet away, and it's just like, whatever. So, ideally, I should have hit an ST there. You see the cooldown, too, is really rough. I just now have control. And if I don't, see, and that sucks, because now I don't have my ST. I gotta build my ST back up. Same deal, he's gonna try to breathe fire on me. Now, you see there, he didn't jump far down. So, like, you know, you see what I'm saying? Like, oof. So this is not going well. Looks like Guri just died. Okay, he's down. So, an ideal first part Bone Dragon, I would have hit that ST the first time. He'd probably already be dead, because Lunging Art's pretty powerful. Okay, cool. Yeah, I figured I'd start out small, you know? Just try to... <clears throat> I'm probably giving more information than I need, but... Uh... Okay. Uh, he's down. He's going to come back pretty similarly. I think he, he kind of floats the second part. And he's going to incorporate these two statues here. Okay, we want to pick up this experience. Oh... We don't have our ST, but we're very close, which is good. We just need one or two hits before uh, to finish this thing out. Because if we can land an ST, we'll either get him so close to death, or if we're standing next to Guri, we might completely one-shot. <sighs> so he's kind of all messed up now. <laughs> kind of messed up looking now. Okay, so you see he's kind of floating around. You can see the shadow. Um, I'm going to try to very desperately to get a couple of hits in. And I'm hoping to see my ST bar flash. That'll tell me that I have my ST. And then when he does his ST, I can prepare for that. Which essentially is going to be me standing about underneath him. Maybe a little to the right or the left. And mashing R one which is my lunging arc right before he starts his because or 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 around the same time if you remember from do ink he also has an st where if you wait too long and you get like his third or fourth st it's like these stalactites will fall down from the ceiling <clears throat> well jajara 2.0 has the same deal so that's what we're looking for once he starts doing that you want to you want to trigger that lunging arc before you get hit with a whatever it is it's falling i think i don't know what it i can't remember what it is rocks or something so first things first we're going to try desperately to get this st loaded up which means we need to make contact a couple of times okay 
we got it. We got it. So I whiffed a few times, but we got it, and that's all that matters. So now I'm gonna I'm gonna back up a little and try to center myself as best I can in his shadow before everything starts falling. Okay, that was probably early. Oh, it makes me sick to my stomach. Yeah, I just whiffed. So, yeah. It's hard when you're doing a tutorial because you're not kind of on autopilot. See, and then I don't have my STA, so. So I'm telling you what the idealized version is so that you can try... We got him anyways. Uh, but really, you want to utilize your STs there. You, you, want, you want those to land first time. And with practice, you'll get it. Pick up the experience. I'd like to stand about right here. That's where the character's going to be. Um, and that's it. After we get the, the mana crystal, we will... Oh, cool. Cool, yeah. And, and I love the feedback. Thanks, Mav. Like... Let me know if it if it starts sounding like way over your head, like like oh like you know like I'm trying to like point out the important stuff, and I hope I'm not like giving too much detail, but hopefully you can come through and be like, well, I don't need to know that, or I could use this. Um, there is a guide. There's a very nice written guide that you can look at in conjunction with this video if you wanted, probably. Um, so here we are picking up the mana crystal again for Draconis. And for all the hard work we did for Lark, he's going to... Okay, option one here about mana. He's going to give us the green cane artifact. And that's actually the next artifact we drop. And actually, we're getting pretty close to the end of the dragon storyline. They so split there. Because the next dragon we fight is Vadis. And then the final, Draconis, the Crimson Dragon. So, two more splits in the story, and then we have a few extra splits before the Mana Goddess. So, we're done with Bone Fortress. We go north once, left once. So, right underneath Domino, we're going to press square, X to pick up Green Cane, X to drop it, and then X to enter. And actually, I got to go take a bathroom break. Oh, cool, Mav. Dude, welcome, or I mean... It's great to have you, dude, and um, I feel like this is a game that anybody can play, and you can start at any level. You could start not knowing anything, and you could go as far as you want with this game, really. There's a lot There's a lot that I think in the future, I think there's still a lot of optimization and glitches and things that haven't been found and figured out, so... The more people play, the more people figure that stuff out. Okay, I'll be right back, you guys. I'm going to pause the timer, actually, this time around. And uh, just go to the restroom real quick.
Okay, we're back. So, um... We're going into the White Forest. This is the home of Vadis, the White Dragon. And I mentioned that Sierra is Lark's sister. She's also a dragoon, and her dragon master is Vadis. So that's where we're headed. Vadis essentially is going to enlist us to help fix this whole Draconis mess. And uh, she wants to see how powerful we are, so we're going to have to fight her and Sierra at the same time. So, a lot of levels we're going to the right a lot. This time we're going to go to the left, like, almost every time. So once he says, let's go, you have control. You go to the left. And, uh... Every time you do that, um... Lark's going to be like, you're right, I sense her scent from this direction. Uh... It's going to be three birds here. What are these guys called? Needle beaks. Oh, Jesus. Okay, here we're going to go straight down. Uh, then we're going to keep going left. There's going to be a mushroom, a goblin, and a, rab a white rabbi. Ooh, we got our nerf splitter. Ha! <laughs> okay, um... You know, I am interested to know the, the power on the earth splitter, so... Earth splitter... 31. So, what, the Black Elk was twin was 26? Yeah, 26. So you can see that the Earth Splitter significantly, but not too much. It's like, what, plus plus 5? So if you get the Earth Splitter, it's heavier, but you're getting plus 5 attack. Black Elk it's only 26 attack, but it's lighter, and you can swing it faster. So those are the two, the two axes that you can get at the beginning there. Oops. Here you just run left. Um. And you fight a tree and a rabbi. Wooding. Oof. Get tight in here and you can... It'd be hard to figure out how to attack. Um, most people here do a Wind Slasher, right? L1 for me. Anyways, that's what the guide says. Um, sometimes I thought I wanted to save the Wind Slasher for these annoying snakes that come up next. But here you go, like, left down. There's going to be a cutscene here. <coughs> I think you wait till Lark says, let's go. And you go right here. You want to watch out for that um, chest, because if you run into it, you might accidentally open it, and then you waste time. Okay. There's some annoying snakes here. Let's see what these guys are called. They will troll you. Rattler Boa. So they're dangerous. Jump cancel, I say, would be the safest way to attack these guys. Because... I don't know. You're just going to have to try it for yourself and see. These guys can be really annoying. Oof. Come on. I'm trying to counter-strike, but he just keeps attacking Lark. And you can see, like I mentioned before, visibility is almost null right there. You can't see anything that's going on. Okay. Here we go. We're going to fight. Uh, first, there's a, a, a pretty long cutscene. All you gotta do is mash X the whole time. Lark's gonna pester uh, Vadis and Sierra for the mana crystal.
And Badish, she's my favorite dude. She's really pretty. Very cool looking dragon. Reminds me of Flamey. Secret of Mana. And other games. Okay, so we get the Torch of Coral. And now we gotta fight both Sierra and Vadis. <laughs> None of my business. So you say stay. And then Vadis is like, uh, I wish to ask a favor. Show me your powers. So... Most runners I talk to tell me to fight <coughs> Sierra first. So I'm going to try that method. Uh, it's the same thing as when you fight Sierra first, which is, uh, you know, try your best to counter strike her. Do what you can, you know, but, but uh, like a perfect, I've had like a perfect battle here before once, like probably only once, and I've just counter striked Sierra. Um... We'll try to do that first, and then I'll try to explain Vadis and some of the things that happen. Oops. Keep hitting Vadis instead. You can't force her to, to cooperate with you. Ugh. But then you also have to watch out for Vadis. He's going to do something sometime. Yeah, that'll put you to sleep. That is a, a nightmare, okay? So, I knew it was coming and I got out of the way, but... The good news is, if it does put Guri to sleep, if we could kill Sierra real fast, then Guri won't troll us while we're trying to fight Vadis. So this isn't really going very well. <laughs> We're trying, though. Okay, we got her. Okay. Now we fight Vadis. Now, the strategy on Vadis... Here's the thing about Vadis. Is anytime she moves, she disappears. So we don't want her to move. Which means we don't want to plunge attack her. We don't want to jump cancel her. And then something that you don't have control over is Guri. Guri likes to throw his axe. If Guri throws his axe, it'll hit her and she'll disappear. So it'll move her. So it can be frustrating. We don't have any control over Guri, so we just focus on herself. But if we can stand next to Guri and just straight power cancel her, that's our best chance. You'll notice that when I accidentally counterstruck her instead of Sierra, she disappeared. So that's kind of what we're dealing with. Oh, she's about to do... Yeah, okay. Woo! We avoided that. But at least now Guri's not going to... We don't get our synchro, but at least he's not going to troll us. Okay. Woo! So you can see that that is kind of like a hell of a battle. But we're done. Oh, and I don't have my timer going, so whatever. And then we split. So it's a very short cutscene after that. <laughs> Gold. I don't even know what that means. Okay, so... We're, 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 we're getting very close to the end of the game. Um, as you can see on the, on the split timer, we've got three splits left. Actually, we have four. Not all of them are showing. We have the Crimson Dragon, which is the final event in the Dragon storyline. Where we're going to come face to face with Draconis. It's going to be awesome. Then we have the Summer Level, which is a very fun event. It's not related. It's got great music, though, and it's very fun. And then we'll go back home to do an event called uh, Why can't I remember the name of that? Cage of Dreams. Cage of Dreams. Cage of Dreams. To, to, earlier I mentioned the fact that you have to have X amount of artifacts on the map to beat the game. Well, 
The reason you do that is so you can go home and do Cage of Dreams. Because if you complete Cage of Dreams, you get the Sword of Mana artifact. And if you place the Sword of Mana, then you can beat the Mana God. Beat the game. So we gotta beat Draconis. We're gonna fight a crab in Summer Lovin' called uh, Full Metal Haggard. He appears in other mana games. We're gonna go home, do Cage of Dreams, and get the Sword of Mana artifact. We're gonna place that and do Legend of Mana. So we have four events left. Um, before we go back into the Underworld, we go north twice above Domina and drop the Torch of Coral. We don't actually enter yet. It becomes Medora Beach. And we're just dropping it. Don't know why. It's just how the run, how they routed the run. And then we go right, mash X, and get into the Underworld. Only this time we're going, uh, Sierra's going to come with us, I believe. His Lark is... He's finished with his stuff, and he, he went to go to, to, to Conus, I suppose. So, we've been here before, and we're going to go to the exact same spot. So we just run over here, mash X. It's kind of a specific space, so kind of note where I'm standing. And I believe we hit option two, like normal. She can't navigate the Western world by herself. Remember, we got the Baptism of Flames, so we can we can navigate. Will you come with me? Option two, go with her. Now, at this point, you want to talk to Sierra by hitting X. So you might have to move a little closer to her and hit X. Um, a bit of a cutscene here. Uh, uh, some some bad guys are going to come try to attack us. And Sierra's going to kill them all. She's going to use the same method that Lark used to kill those wind callers. That makes that super loud noise I warned you guys about if you're wearing headphones. So, as soon as that battle's over, I think the Crimson Dragon or... Uh, yeah, Crimson Dragon type comes in and out. Got to mash through that. There's that loud noise. Um, as soon as this cools down, we, we, we have control and we can leave. You cannot repel me with your tricks, Draconis. Okay, here we go. So this is going to feel like the first time we're in the, um, we're in the underworld, only now that we had the Baptism of Flames, those doors are open to us. So there's less for us to do. However, we're going to go deeper into the underworld because we can. Oops, okay, messed up. So, yeah, I always do that, but you want to go up and then up again. Um, to the right and down. Down left. Second door on the right. Remember, these were the doors that were closed earlier, but we opened them. And then probably to the right again, yep. So you remember, we fought Hidodama here, so we had a battle. We had two battle screens, and then we fought Hidodama. So, one battle. We're one-shotting these guys. Nice, that worked out nice. I got status elemented, but I didn't even have to move because Ark or somebody else took care of that other enemy. So, uh, one more battle. Then we're going to go into the room that Hidodama was in, but he won't be there anymore because we've killed him. Demon meat. Okay, so here's this room. Um, you want to hold circle and X at the same time there, so you run through the door. It's the same principle as Lumina, where you do that while you talk to Monique to to get that frame skip and to run. Here you want to run all the way to the right as far as you can go. And then here you want to go to the second door on the right. Or second door. Um... Another room like this. Uh, shad hole? Yeah, four shad holes. Just talk to one of them. It's going to warp you <coughs> to the room you want to be in. And beyond this room, we're going to have to fight Lark. But he's going to get turned into a centaur. It's pretty It's pretty uh, gnarly. Oops, I didn't mean to do that. So that's something that can happen. You just got to back out and come back in. Are you ready? It's the whole mashing too fast thing. Second option, let's go. All right, we're going to fight Lark.
Yeah. I'm gonna turn Lark into a something awful. Some sort of centaur thing. We'll have no We'll have no choice but to beat it. What's going on behind my Oh, I see. <laughs> oh, excuse me. Just mash through all this. Mash, mash, mash. Uh, the best strategy I've found here from top runners is to jump cancel Lark to the left side of the screen and just do not stop. If you do it well, he will not get an ST off and you'll just, you just kill him super fast. So that's what I'm going to try to do. I suppose you could probably power cancel, but I feel like it's in your best interest to learn jump cancel because it's more uh, likely that you'll be able to kill him without him getting an ST off. And his STs are long and they're a pain. They take a long time. So again, jump cancel, just to refresh, is power attack, which is square. And then I... I use triangle, which is jump, to buffer. If Yuri stands next to me, it's even more ideal, but I'm not going to start jump canceling. Oops. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Oh, oh. Huh. I thought I, I lost my rhythm and I thought I was going to get an ST. But we did it. We did it. No ST. So that went well. Um. Oh. Now, that's one downside to that is that you can lose your experience. It's not the end of the world, but it's possible that the experience spawns outside uh, and you can't get it to it. Whatever. That can happen in, in several bosses. Um, there's a little bit here of a cutscene, enough for you to go to the fridge and get a drink or something. Probably not to go to the bathroom, but we'll count it together. We'll see how long it is. And it starts right now. The 2.24.47. There is an even longer... Not It's not super long, but there's a, there is an opportunity to sneak a bathroom break in in a minute. If, but, you know, got to be quick about it. But at least during this time, so right now I'm not mashing any buttons. So I'll try to determine how much time you have to go to the fridge and get something to drink. Two twenty five. It's going to be sub two twenty six, I think. 25, 40, 50, 2. So really, you just have one minute. About a minute, maybe a little over. You have about 60 seconds there if you need to blow your nose, scratch, go to, um, not go to the bathroom, maybe go to the kitchen and grab a drink if it's close enough. Mash, mash, mash. So there's some stuff coming up here you gotta know. Uh, bonds of life bring caring and support and will be much help to you. Do remember the, the those words. Why? That's a weird sentence. Do remember those... Like, is she trying to say, do you remember those words? Why? I, I don't know. Okay, it says, the world will suffer if we do not stop Draconis. He desires to subjugate all life in this world. Even the aloof dragons seek bonds with other life through their dragon dragoons. Such is the truth of life and the absolute law of the world. Fiera. Why? Which is me. 
I entrust you with saving the bonds of life. Put a stop to Draconis. Okay, so Sierra's gonna say, let us fight together, why? That's our cue that we have now have control of our character. We run up to Sierra and talk to her. Let us fight together. Of course. We cannot return. Are you ready? I am ready. Then Vadis is going to say one or two other things. I entrust you with saving the bonds of life. Put a stop to Dakonas. Bam. That's where you have control to go into the dungeon. Okay. We're going to go up a few times. So one, two times up. Three times up. Then we're going to go left up the stairwell. And then we're going to go left and fight a battle. These guys suck, by the way. I hate them. And they draw only drop money, it seems, which is extremely annoying to pick up. So you're gonna go left and up. Then you're gonna go right, but you won't be able to go far. You're gonna fight this goblin and uh, fierce face. I fight this goblin off screen. You pretty much lined up with it. So that's what I do. Demon meat. Up the stairs. What happens next? Fight these two fierce faces. Two power cancels each, looks like. Pick up the experience as fast as you can. You're going to go through this door right here. And then you're going to go left. No, you're going to go up. Okay, and this is the first trap door. Then we're going to go left once we drop. So you see that save? That's a save station right there. <clears throat> you're going to go left down the stairs. You're going to go all the way down, and you're going to turn right to battle some... Uh, what are these things called? Howlers. These guys will troll, okay? So I, that's all i got to say to you. If, if you can, try to fight them from far away. They'll jump in the air and, like... I don't know. I don't even, like... I don't even want to show you what they'll do. Uh, just try to try to power cancel them from a little bit of ways. Try not to get too close. Okay, this is like many of the battles where. <clears throat> so so we fight the sky dragon first, and then the land dragon later. This is a sky dragon. Our exit is on the right where we just came through. So we're gonna go to the left of him and jump cancel or plunge him over to the right hand side. Okay, just like we do the wind collars and everything else. Also, you'll see he trolls. He, he has this counter-strike moment there where... So I try to stay far back. Plus, I'm standing right next to Guri, so it's going to do more damage. Oop. You see how Sierra, Sierra knocked him away. There was nothing I could do. I just had to reposition. Um, Sierra's synchro. What is her... Let's look at her synchro. It has something to do with dragons. Dragons. Defense plus. So she... she if you're standing next to her and a dragon hits you, I guess you don't take as much damage. Um, we're going to battle these Howlers again. So we're going back the way we came. Okay, do you see that? I'm glad that happened, because that's, that's the trolling I'm talking about. Even though I was far back, he still got me. So that's what you want to try to avoid. And Jump Castle will help you do that. Uh, jump, jump Castle is probably a better technique if you want to try to learn it. For the Howlers, you get trolled less that way because you're just faster and you get them away from you. The further away they are, the less they can do that crap to you. Uh, go right all the way down the stairs. Go all the way to the right, as far as you can go, down the stairs. And then we're going to fall through this. You basically can't walk anymore. It, you're going to fall. And we're going to fight this land dragon. And we're going to try to jump, cancel, or plunge this guy over to the right-hand side. But here's my strategy. My strategy is to... I go down a little and to the right. It's going to get the dragon to appear, and then it's also going to get the dragon to walk down a little bit. 
The reason we want to do that is because we want to get it to the right hand side. But if <clears throat> if he if he's too much north or where he starts, there's a little like terrain area to the right that will keep him like stuck and not moving. So it's it sounds crazy, but maybe you'll see what I'm talking about. So I'm gonna run down here. I'm gonna let him see he's walking down a little bit. Oops. Ugh. Start getting him over here. Not really doing a good job. Okay. Ooh, we dizzied him. Okay, we got him past. So, can you see uh, right above me, there's like some terrain. That's what I'm talking about. He can get stuck there. So, if there's any way you can get him below that, it's very helpful. Hmm. You want to get him all the way over to the door. The door's over here. But the reason you want to do that is because Guri always walks very slowly when you're done with the battle. Like, if, if Guri was way over to the left, it would take him forever to come all the way to the right. So the more you get him over to the right, the more Guri starts to come over to the right and the less time it takes for him to walk. And you'll see what I mean. Pick up the experience and stand right next to this door, this light. Actually, Gary's in a really good spot. Um, go right. This, these, these guys are kind of annoying. You're going to do your Wind Slasher, so L1 for me. We may whiff. It happens, but it looks like we got everybody. They usually drop a lot of money, which is super annoying. Picked it up. You can get a Bray Blade right there, not that you need it, but it does drop there. Um, we are very close to the end of the game, or to the end of this level, so so we're getting close. You're going to fight some Howlers here. A Howler and a Goblin. First splitter, down, go left and down. Go down all the way. I think we're gonna go right, I recall, or is it left? Left, okay, left. You wanna save your ST, I think, so just power cancel these guys. Oops, and that's me. When you see me jumping like that, that's because I missed my inputs. <laughs> that's not intentional. Okay, so we didn't waste our ST, so we have that for this upcoming Centaur. We're going to go up left. All the way over to the left. And this looks familiar, because we've been here before. This time we're going to go, I think, straight down. Yeah, all the way down. Just keep going down. You're going to run all the way down to this blue dot. Try to, anyways blue gym looking thing okay so a good uh, strategy here you can really just treat this guy just like you did Lark although I have trouble getting an ST list I don't even know if it's possible I don't think I've ever got an ST list Zenoa so this thing's called Zenoa so I just try to jump cancel him um, I think technically you could, you should, maybe you should try to get him over to the right, but to me it wastes too much time going all the way around to the back and trying to, so I, sometimes I just attack him. We'll see what happens. But if he does go into ST, which I'm pretty sure he will, we have an ST ready. <clears throat> oh, oh, that's good luck actually. So somehow he jumped over us. So this is good. Now we really can get him over there the way we want. Okay, when you hear that noise, woo, whatever that is, that's him about to go into ST. We have ours ready, so let's see if we can land one. I'm just gonna wait till he's like at the apex of his ST. Woo! And I'm standing close enough to where those things missed me. Yay, we hit him. We weren't buffed with Guri, but it should do a good amount of damage, yeah. Nice, so that was, that was pretty clean. And now we're right by the store. I never really do that, so that's cool. I mean, 
you know, he, he, he got over there on his own, though. I didn't have anything to do with that, but it was cool. It worked out. So we're almost there. All we gotta do, we have, like, one more battle. Gotta go north a few times. One. Two. Three. And then I think this room has some fierce faces. Yep. And then we fight Draconis. So remember, two power cancels here. Or you could do a jump cancel, really. That's it, man. Bloody mask. Okay. Here we go. Draconis. Draconis is a beast. I'll try to explain during this cutscene how to kill Draconis. The most op... I mean, clearly, if you haven't learned jump cancel, if you're struggling with it, just do a power cancel. But jump cancel really is the best way to beat this. Um... You want to jump cancel him into the corner? I think I go right first. I try to get him over to the right-hand side. If, with a lot of practice, you can sense that he's about to fly over to the left-hand side, and you can go ahead and leave a little early and position yourself to jump cancel him right as he lands on the left-hand side. And you just do that, and so you could skip his STs. It's pretty cool. It, it, it's hard, though, so it may not work. Um, and you can hit him with an ST. You can hit him with a lunging arc and do serious damage. It just takes a lot of practice. I, I don't really have any clear description of, of 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 what kind of visual cues you're looking for to land that ST. Uh, it just comes with practice and timing, and, and, and I'm still working. This is actually, like, the hardest boss for me, so... But yeah, but he when he starts doing that with electricity, he's going to transform. That's... Okay. Now... You have to clear this, become my sustenance. So clear that right away so that you get to your boss. So mash X. <laughs> okay. Like I said, I'm going to try to jump cancel him to the right side. Um, so jump. the thing about jump cancel. Okay. So everybody knows that's played this game, that's played this speed run, that generally speaking, Draconis' hitbox is wonky. Okay. It's hard to find... So, <clears throat> I think you're supposed to move up just a hair. A few pixels helps. Just up. So, I'm going to try to move up. I hope that helps. I'm also going to jump cancel because jump cancel, I think, has a bigger window for the hitbox. It, it, ensures, it ensures you hit. You, you're going it, to... It, it increases the chance of a hit, I would say. That's what I've heard from good runners. So, anyways, let's see what we can do. Okay, he's gonna go. Okay, we're gonna try an ST. And we hope it lands. It did land. We didn't synchro though, but we did a lot of damage. Where he's down on his final bar, okay? So we're just gonna finish, try to finish him off with jump cancels. That, that, was, that was good, man. Okay, he's gonna fly over. You can kinda sense it. And we got him. That was a good Draconis. You kind of see, I, I, I tried to do what I said, where I, I jump canceled him to the corner. Instead of flying over, he went into an ST there, so that was my opportunity to try to get an ST. The thing about it is, he does some things, like, he does these, like, wind slash things that will deplete your ST. And then you won't be able to use it. It's kind of annoying. So it's good that we lucked out. No experience there, just smash through. Now this, 240.58. Wait. No, never mind. Okay. Just so you know, 241.05. This is a, this is a, this is another opportunity where you could probably sneak and do something, and then the longest of of opportunities is coming up too. Okay, so I'll try to explain it. Right now, there's no mashing. This is just all cutscene. So it looks about a minute to me, because we're going to have to start mashing. I would start mashing to be safe right about now, about 50 seconds, and I'll tell you when to stop mashing. Some of this stuff you don't have to mash, some you do, so it's just like I just mash through all of it just to make sure, you know? 
when when the copy that Lark says says something like I don't need a thousand years. After you clear that box, then you're good for a few minutes. We'll, we'll time it. Yeah, the music will start playing. So the, the music playing is a cue. Right here. Uh, next one. There it is. No more mashing. Okay, guys. 242.32. This, this is a good opportunity for a very fast back, bathroom break, but you, you can do it. I've done it. <clears throat> you need to pee. This is the best chance you'll have in this game. And uh, 242.32 is when it started for us. But yeah, hands free right now. So the Guardian's Ward or the Blue Dragon, the Bone Dragon have risen again. So yeah, after killing Lark, you get about a minute to do something if you need to stretch, get a drink. Then after you kill Draconis, you get about a minute. Then you got some mashing. Thousand year, I don't need a thousand years. Piano music, then you could stop mashing for about two to three minutes. Looks like two forty-four something rather. This is it. Two forty-four oh nine. So. 28, a minute 28, minute 38. Let's just say a minute and a half. You got a minute and a half from the time Lark says, I don't need a thousand years till the time you need to split, okay? So that's your bathroom break. Uh, so, we're almost done, you guys. Um, we're gonna go left twice and drop the Tome of Magic. It becomes Geo. I actually can't remember if the sand goes to the left or the right. I think the flame goes up. So I'm going to tap up, drop the flame, which becomes El uh, Gato Grottos. And... Below Geo goes the Sand Rose, which becomes the Duma Desert. We're not going to any, enter any of these, but you do enter these in the other storylines, or at least a few. <clears throat> at least in Jumi, you enter the Desert <clears throat> and Gato and Geo. And then in Fairy, you enter Gato. So, anyways, now we have no more artifacts and we go to the Mador Beach. This is a really fun level. After all the stress of the dragon fighting, this is just really mellow. Um, we mash through until it says Summer Lovin', and then I think after Summer Lovin', we take control. Um, I'm trying to think about the optimal way there's a, if you look behind this palm tree here, there's a, a crab hiding. You can kind of see it. Mm, my mouse doesn't show up. Uh, there's a crab hiding behind this palm tree to the right, all the way to the right. Um, essentially, anytime you hit crabs, and uh, this will be the first time we, we, I think, first time we run into any crabs. Um, if you, if you, if you hit them. <clears throat> they break, and, 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 it, and it causes you to pause for a few seconds. So it's not ideal to hit them, okay? So if you can avoid them, try to do it. But it, it takes a lot of practice. I still hit them. So, you know, you do what you can. But I think the optimal way is to go up and around that guy just a little bit. 
You see? But then I had to stay low so I didn't hit those other two crabs. That went pretty well. Okay, again, visibility isn't super awesome. Uh, these crabs troll the way that uh, howlers do. So, beware. Some you can counter-strike a crab. You can do spin on a crab. You know, I don't know. Just do whatever you think you need to do. But just know that they will troll. They will, uh... They will, um... They'll try to fuck with you. Okay, we'll go into this... Uh, I think we have another battle of two fish. We have two fish. I want to see what these guys are called. Ifish. Cool. Okay, so there's a bunch of crabs here we're going to try to avoid. And I just stay at the top. That's that's my method. There might be a more optimal method, but that keeps me out of trouble. I love these things. I think these are Sahagan. Yeah, these guys are awesome. They're actually pretty strong. They take quite a few hits. I took a power cancel and a jump cancel to kill it. Uh, a bat. These bats suck. What can you do? Oof. See what happens when you don't do your power can when you miss your. Oof. And I don't have spin. What can I do? Okay. Uh. Okay, we're gonna fight a, a big baby here, I think his name is. Oops. Big baby. Level 10. He will troll real bad, so be careful. Be cautious. I usually try not to line myself up exactly with it, because that's when I get trolled the most. Okay, there's some crabs here, so I wait like a half second. And then I move. And you get that trippy looking crab there. That looks like a mistake. Some developer's thing. I don't know. You can have a crab and a... What are these things called? Tesla. Pincher crab and a Tesla. That went pretty well. Usually the crab trolls me. And two more crabs. I hate crabs. They're so hard. Oops. See how far away he got me from? They're rough, dude. You'll have to develop your own way with the crabs. Okay, then we fight the swordfish thing. I don't know what it's called. Sea Jack. Again, I try not to get too lined up with it. And I, I like jump cancel because it keeps him away from me. He'll troll you if he gets too close. I'm going to hold straight down to avoid all these crabs. And then this is the boss, Full Metal Haggard. So, um... I know that, uh... Lemur fights him this way. I think Lemur starts out with a lunging arc. That's what I'm gonna do. Standing right next to Guri, too. Oh, we missed the second hit, but it should be a pretty good damage. Hey, that went real well, so, hey. Well, that's what World Record Runner does, so why not, right? Start off with a lunging arc and then power or jump cancel him and then just finish it out. Also, a note that, that, that crab shape hole in the back wall, that's pretty comical. It's very Looney Tunes. <clears throat> okay, <clears throat> here you're gonna mash X until until this penguin on the right with the blue leaves through the cave on the right. You'll see this text box that says David. That's your cue to know that you can take control. Okay, now you go to the left. Do not talk to that crab. You talk to that crab, you might as well rip your run. Okay, you got the moon's mirror and um, something else. All pot of harbor, or whatever. Anyways, um, rusty anchor maybe. Okay, very important. Okay, very important that you drop the rusty anchor before <clears throat> the moon's mirror. Okay, or you'll rip your run. You won't be able to drop it because this thing has to go next to water. You see. 
Just make sure it, you know, make sure to drop the rusty anchor first. Then you can go up and drop your final, uh, which is the moon's mirror, which becomes the tower, right? So, Alpata Harbor and then the Tower of Lairs, right? Something like that? Yep. So, those two, you, those two are in the Jumi storyline, but not in this. Okay, we have no more artifacts left, man. So, we can do... Let's count how many artifacts we have. One, two, three, four, five, six... Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. No, I already did that one. Twelve. Thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. Seventeen. Okay. So if I counted right, you need seventeen artifacts to unlock Cage of Dreams. So after you drop those last two artifacts, you go home. And believe it or not, don't know why, but we're gonna leave and then come back, okay? So, enter home, then exit home. And then enter again. Enter home, exit home, enter home. And a cutscene will happen with a bunch of sproutlings. Mash through it. Uh, I will say that the movement here is very tricky, okay? This is the worst movement in the game, in my opinion. Just for whatever reason, and, and you'll have to figure it out on your own, but navigating through these little sproutlings can be a real challenge. Sometimes it goes very smoothly, but not often for me. You can see what I mean. That was a little awkward. You enter home and you leave. And that triggers... Uh, little sorcerers? Yeah. And then as soon as the pelican leaves the screen, you'll have control. You want to go left, and it'll trigger Cage of Dreams. And you go through here. And you enter this uh, door here. And you're going to talk to Pokael, who is a Wisdom. And I'm not sure what this stained glass guy is named, but either way, they're having some philosophical discussion there. So. Peace is what we need is the key term there before you leave. Okay, this is very important, okay? Pokael is going to talk to you. You're going to absolutely say no, okay? If you don't, then you're just going to waste time. Another thing doesn't make any sense but you got to do it leave and come back to get rid of another cutscene where I think if you were to walk in here Pokeye would talk to you some more or something so that's just a little thing okay then you go talk to the stained glass window and you're in the cage of dreams uh, thorn of hope so I like to come up here these guys are called spiny cones and then I spy I'm just power canceling these guys, nothing special. And then you go down. Now, be cautious, you're gonna have to go right, even though it doesn't seem like it. Hold right. Hold right again, kind of right up a little, actually. And you don't wanna get too close to these guys. Oof. It can be kind of annoying. Ugh. Kind of annoying. Okay. We got it. Okay. You don't want to use your ST because this... Go to the right. These guys right here, I think their names are Proto? Oto? Oto. You're going to want to win slash these guys, okay? So L1 for me. You want to kind of get out of... You kind of want to move to the right a little, I found. It helps you hit all of them. But you one-shot them. Pick up your stuff and go to the right. And these guys are annoying, but you just gotta try your best. And that's it, man. Go to the right and then it takes control. Just mash X through the rest of it. You're gonna find the little Sproutling over here. 
And I believe he gives you the Sword of Mana. Which, if you recall, I mentioned is the very last artifact. And uh, once we place that, we'll be able to fight the Mana Gods. We got the Sword of Mana. That's it, man. Now we're on the last event. <coughs> so we dropped the Sword of Mana. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> right here. To the east, right of Mech of Caverns. It's a pretty cool little transformation. And uh, the time is, uh, you split time on the final blow of Mana Goddess, so you'll see me do that. Mash X. Keep mashing to enter Tree of Mana. Uh, first thing we're going to do is see Poke IL, and it's going to do the type, you know, Legend of Mana. You're going to want to clear all that, and then you can start run walking up the tree vines. <clears throat> roots. Uh, oh, no, I'm sorry. The first thing you do is hold left. So really, I should have been holding left before the screen even came up, okay? So hold left. Remember this from the beginning of the game? So here we are. But you gotta hold left to walk into the area. Now you can mash a bit, because... The Legend of Mana type's gonna pop up. Pokel, uh, I don't know if he says anything, but he is there. You don't want to talk to him. Yeah, he does. Welcome to the Sanctuary of Mana. Legend of Mana, Mash X. That will disappear on its own time. If you Mash X, it, it, it clears quicker. Okay, you're going to go to the right, okay? And you're going to... It's the only way to go, I guess. Up here. Uh, no baddies here. Keep going to the right, past the chest. You're gonna stay left. Hug the left, okay? If you if you accidentally go right, you're gonna fall off this tree limb and be forced into a battle with this um, called a uh, Marlboro or something, okay? So stay to the left. And now you can veer right, I believe. Yep. And but you're gonna cut left, okay? And go through this door here. And you're gonna fight a uh, 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 sky dragon and a land dragon. Okay, so I'm gonna jump cancel and power cancel. Oof. See, I'm too close. I don't like how he's. I don't like the position that he's in there, dude. Uh, that could have been better, whatever. Uh, Go right and then left, right? I mean, you're curving around to the left. And don't go down, go up through this door. And now we're going to fight a, an eagle and something else. Garuda. He'll do the wind thing on you. It's really annoying. Okay, now you're going to have to devise your own method here. Um, for whatever reason, I really like to try to counter-strike this basilisk. <coughs> doesn't always work, but it, it mostly works. It's the fast. It's definitely the fastest way to kill it, I think. We'll see if I can make it happen. Well, he's kind of in a fucked up position. Ugh. Okay, this should work right here. I'm mashing, I'm mashing circle to ensure I get that counter strike. So that was kind of messed up, but essentially I would want to just immediately kind of stand to the right of him on that, on that area and just hold a mash circle until I get my counter strike. You can also just try to slash him. I don't know, I just find it awkward, a very awkward spot. Um, here we go. We're getting close. We're gonna fight this Chocobo, which you should just like power cancel. Got him. Don't worry about the experience. Come over here, kill this guy, pick it up, experience, and then head north. We get that level up, which gives us time to come all the way up here. 
Um, I think this is where, yeah, we're almost there. Because once we enter this door here, <coughs> we're in the sanctuary. <coughs> Entrance to the sanctuary. Sanctuary gate. Kind of like on our way there now. We're very close. Um, we're going to go on this like uh, like baseball diamond shape area. Okay, so we're going to go up. Fight these things. A punkster and a wooding. Hmm. I'm not going to move because you see I'm, I'm status helmeted. So if I tried to move, I would go the wrong way. So I just decided to stay still. <clears throat> so keep going up it's gonna be like a battle and then nothing okay and then a battle and then nothing so it's gonna go like that so uh, you probably could counter strike that ox yay we got him and then kill this basilisk and then we go left this time okay so uh, think about a baseball diamond we're gonna go take the corner to the left there's not gonna this is another left but no no bad guys and then we're gonna come to three dragons, uh, 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 two two land dragons and a, and a sky dragon, or a kid dragon, a land dragon, and a sky dragon. Either way, you're supposed to just win slasher. Hopefully, Guri gives me my buff. Ugh, it didn't happen. Yeah, it sucks. If you have if you have um, in the other, dude, I'm on fire right now, literally. Um, if you play some of the other storylines and you have the hammer. Um, it's really nice because the Blamo ST uh, one-shots everybody there. But in our case, you do a Wind Slasher, it does a lot of damage, but then you got to go in with your final slashes and finish them off. Just stand still here and power cancel this guy, okay? Don't move at all. You could get a Counter-Strike in. Yep, if you, if you try hard. And then that's it, man. Once we pick up this experience, <coughs> it's Legend of Mana time. It's uh, Mana Goddess time. Um, something to note, I'm mashing X, okay? I'm gonna mash X through all this text, but once the text stops, you have to move your character up a certain amount of pixels before the battle begins, so don't forget to do that. I think it's after this block of copy. Yeah, here we go. So you see I moved up, and now the battle begins. If you don't do that, the battle won't start. I'll think. Okay. This is a level 25, the mana goddess. This is what people call a, uh, a counter-strike fishing experiment where, not experiment, just a counter-strike fishing battle where you're trying very hard to counter-strike her, okay? Um, and ideally, you're gonna wanna stand next to Guri to get the most out of it. It's challenging though, you'll see. Ugh. Oh. <coughs> Ooh, we got her. Okay, we only got one hit. That sucks. I'm gonna get out of the way. She's gonna do something. I'm gonna try to 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 lunging arc her. We'll see if it lands. Nope. But we were uh, there were iframes, so we didn't get hurt. This is not going well. Not getting any hits at all. Yeah, this is not going well. So. Ideally, we would have already hit her a few times. I think we've already hit her once. That's just not enough. There's one. Ooh, I think I got a synchro there because Guri came alive right away. We get her? God damn. Oof, you see, it's hard, dude. If you're not lined up exactly right. Oh no, what are you doing? Oh no. Okay, this is bad. Oh, we missed it though, good, good, good. Whew. So if it goes too long, she does this awful ST, which you just saw. Somehow I was able to avoid it by kind of going north, but not too north. What up, Hank? <laughs> yeah, man, this fucking... I'm doing awful. I 
having the hardest time, dude. Not getting any hits. Finally. So that's game. Final strike. That was a just colossally atrocious mana goddess. But imagine it feeling more like my Sierra fight in Dragonbone Fortress. Okay, that's what you're looking for, is like mostly Counter-Strikes, hardly any whiffs, hardly any bullshit, you know, not many STs. It just comes with practice. So that's it, man. That's it. That's the